beloved one i hope you are doing well i want us to take a short reading from the book of psalms chapter 127 it says if god's grace doesn't help the builders they will labor in vain to build a house if god's mercy doesn't protect the city all the centuries will circle it in vain it's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough now god can provide i want you to see this it says god can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy anytime we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy anytime we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to this. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it also by doing this you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel then don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so on you and you here and then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too you were blessed son. stay blessed I choose to see your faithfulness, oh God. We watched a documentary last week, how God took us. This was the whole of Koinonia before, he and I. I mean, just about this crowd. But see what the hand of God has done. Go on our Facebook page and see the wonder-walking power of the Spirit. Go across the campuses in this nation and families and see the awe-inspiring things. That the spirit of god is doing through our teachings it's easy for you to sit down and laugh and say hands grew out legs grew. try it just do it it's easy for you to watch the way we do ministry stresslessly here no burden on you to bring any no cajoling you every time you come and everything is done in excellence it's easy for you to see the favor of god and trivialize it Many times you don't know the power of God's gift in you until you watch others who don't have what you have. I have seen pastors struggle in ministry as if God didn't send them. I have seen people cry. I have seen members languish and lament and weep and say, Lord, won't the word at least work for me? There's no week you have come that there's nobody to give testimony to the glory of God. Do you see these things or are you still blind? Lord, I choose to thank you. I started thanking him when I could not heal a single sick body. At least I thanked him that I could preach. No manifestations, no miracles, no nothing. But there was a harvest of salvation. And I said, Lord, I thank you because this is a sign I'm going for. And God said, you mean you are thanking me for this small? I said, Lord. I said, son, you have not seen anything yet. Then another dimension opens up. And I said, Lord, I return thanks. And God says, do you need to? I said, of course. I'm not stupid. I know that I must return thanks. The Bible says Jesus was passing and he saw ten lepers. And they beckoned on him to heal them. And he said, all right, get up, go and show yourselves to the priest. The Bible says, as they went, they just found out that they were healed. The Bible said Jesus was passing. But only one came back. And when he came back, he saw Jesus still waiting there. I thought the Bible said he was passing. What was he waiting for? And when that one came, he said, were they not ten of you? Where are the other nine? Some of you here are among the other nine. Lord, my parents have started giving me money, but it's just 30,000. When will they increase it? <laughs> Lord, I've gotten this job, but oh, 
It's just 50,000. How much can 50,000? Until you hear the testimony of someone who has waited for 10 years without a job, then you will know he is faithful. Hallelujah. God, when will my own husband come? It's only married men that are coming. Wait till you hear the ladies oh, who no man even has out. Only ladies, tell her, how are you? Learn to see what God is doing and respond in thanksgiving immediately. Don't organize and shift your thanksgiving. And say, oh, no, no. This is not my message tonight. Hallelujah. Be seated, please. God bless you. Say after me, thank you, Jesus. Say one more time, thank you, Jesus. Praise God. We began a series on the full gospel. How many of you were blessed two weeks ago? Powerful, powerful teaching. You will be blessed tonight again in Jesus' name. Now, in 10 minutes, before we get to the main teaching, I want to teach on the power of testimonies. The Lord asked me to do this in 10 minutes, very quickly. The power of testimonies. Hallelujah. This morning, while I prepared, I just sat down, just writing and going through my notes. And suddenly a vision was opened before me. And I saw a release of angels. They were looking like horses. But they were also looking like human beings. And they were running with such speed. And then I said, Lord, what is the meaning of this? And I just had in my spirit, watch. And I kept looking. And then I noticed that they were holding something like vapor. You know how spiritual things are. All of them were holding things like vapor. And then one was holding something like a measuring tape. I mean they were running at supersonic speed. And the Lord told me that this vapor, or it looked like vapor. I had the scripture if the cloud be full of rain i said lord what is this rain is this way but i'm seeing angels holding vapor with that speed and then i had a loud voice i will hasten my word to perform it and god told me that koinonia is entering a dimension of the performance the performance the demonstration of the power of god's word I don't tell you anything until God speaks to me. I'm not one of those people that stand on stage and talk jargons. I believe when I hear the voice of God, the performance. Katabukashia. Hallelujah. And I saw a vision. You know, I love saying things before they happen because there, are, there will be many doubting Thomases. But then when it happens, I saw on this stage, testimonies i saw a line of people reaching down there i said lord what is this and the lord told me there will be an eruption of testimonies that will make people fear to the point that many people will even start speculating that in our something is this is not normal i'm saying it write it you will see it testimonies and so I said Lord why has it not happened why now and the Lord told me something he said my people are not thankful this is why we took our time listen carefully the Lord told me he said you are grateful but you are not thankful hallelujah and then he asked me to share the power of testimonies. This is why we took our time to give thanks. Psalm 22 verse 22. It's just a 10 minutes teaching. Quickly please. Psalm 22 verse 22. 
Lord, we believe your word. Every time you speak, you have the ability to perform. We believe your word. Psalm 22 verse 22. Anybody there? A loud reader? No one is there? Ah! Can we have someone in front? Anybody? As loud as you can. Thank you, sir. I will declare your name unto the brethren in the midst of the congregation will I praise thee he said I will declare your name to the brethren in the midst of the congregation will I praise you hallelujah a testimony is this is with respect to the church the Christian context Honoring the Lord. The act of honoring the Lord by bearing witness to others about his work in your own life. An act of honoring the Lord by bearing witness. About his works in your life. It's an evidence. It's proof. That God is at work. Hallelujah. He says, I will declare your name before the brethren, the family of faith. Hallelujah. He said, before God's congregation. Testimonies are very, very important in the life of the believer. Very, very, very important. Hallelujah. I'll give you four benefits of testimonies very quickly number one testimony brings glory and honor to the name of the lord as seen in psalm 22 verse 22 honor and glory every time you stand on stage to testify of the things that god has done in your life you bring honor you bring glory the congregation sitting will see and say god is truly mighty the Lord in the midst of his people mighty doing wonders that the name of his son Jesus is being lifted you bring honor and glory and the Bible says listen if I be lifted up he said I will draw all men and the way God is lifted up is that he lifts the vessel that lifts him are you listening to me John 17 verse 1. He said, Now the hour has come. Glorify now thy son, that thy son may bring glory to you. So the son is first glorified, and then the father is glorified in the son. Every time you give God glory, every time you testify, you create a platform to honor the Lord in the congregation of God's people. Number two. Testimonies prove that God can be trusted and that his word is true. This is so important. We live in a generation of skeptics. Amazing. It used to be scientists and philosophers alone. But right now, all kinds of people, including young people. How are we sure that Titan works? How are we sure that these miracles are real? How are we sure that these testimonies are not made up? How are we sure that somebody was not giving money to testify? How can armed robbers shoot somebody and the bullets are bouncing back? Don't do film trick for us on stage. Skeptics. When a living witness testifies. See, it's one thing for you to see someone on TV or hear about a testimony in an article. It's one thing for you to see someone that you know. Hallelujah. When God's servant, Pastor Jake's, was healed and God turned his genotype. Many people just knew that ah, this is not joke again. But if we had said it here, some of you would just laugh. And say, all these men of God, they think we are children, they just stand on stage and speak nonsense. Testimonies prove that God can be trusted. Say after me, God can be trusted. Psalm 22, verse 24. 
Same chapter 24. Anybody? He said, For he has not despised nor abhorred the affliction of the afflicted. Of the afflicted. Neither had he hid his face from him. Neither had he hid his face from him. But when he cried unto him. But when he cried unto him. He heard. He heard. So testimonies encourage the people to know that God, your God, because there are many kinds of gods. In River State, bottle of Fanta. Right, Bishop? Bottle of Fanta is a God to somebody. So when you say God, Jesus said to know you the only one and true God. Testimonies prove that God can be trusted and that his word is true. Romans 10, 11. I have 10 minutes for this teaching. Romans 10, 11. You must get this. Romans 10, 11. Just for the scripture saith whosoever believeth on him whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed shall not be ashamed say I believe in God and I will not be ashamed say one more time I believe in God and I will not be ashamed so testimonies prove that God's word is alive Jeremiah 1 verse 12 he said I am a lot he said, son of man, what seest thou? He said, an almond tree. He said, you have seen correctly. For I am alert and active, amplified. Watching over my word to perform it. Number three. Testimonies act as a seal to the miracle that has been received. This is very important. Look at me. Have you seen people get certain miracles and lose it? Have you, have, you, have you heard about that? Have you, have you read books? How to receive and maintain your miracle? I've seen a lot of people that receive miracles and lose it. You see, the purpose of miracle is not just a showmanship. It's to give God glory. Hallelujah. It means if God is not glorified in your miracle, it was wasted. Hallelujah. Luke 17 from verse 11 to 19. The Bible says... That was that's a parable of the ten lepers. That one returned back and gave thanks. And what happened to him? The Bible says Jesus told him to go that he will be made whole. Look at me. Nine were healed. Only one was made whole. Let me tell you what that means. That the people, the leprosy left them but the hands didn't grow back. So healing. The leprosy did not destroy them further. All right, but that one person came back and all his fingers all of it came wholeness so testimonies act as a seal every time you stand before God's people and say the car would have capsized but God kept me demons are standing from where they are standing and watching is a seal because God's people have had it. You have committed God's integrity further in your life. God will not let you come and testify and go back with a disappointment. Are you listening to me? You put pressure on God to preserve that testimony because you have declared in the congregation of his people. And God knows that by these two immutable things he cannot lie. Are you listening to me? A testimony is not what will happen. A testimony is what has happened. You see, I will declare your works. Are you getting blessed? You see, many of you have robbed yourself of new dimensions because you have refused to see. And let be, there are many of you, if you would write the testimonies that God has given you this year, many people would have been born again as a result of your testimony many people would have been healed as a result of your testimony number four the last reason and this is very powerful very very powerful revelations 9 19 verse 10 revelations 19 verse 10 Revelations 19 verse 10. And Please I listen. fell at his feet. And I fell at his feet. To worship him. Okay. And he said unto me, See thou 
do it not. I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God for the testimony of for Jesus. For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Listen, let me explain this mystery. Oh, I pray God will open your eyes. He said the testimony of Jesus is what? The spirit of prophecy. This means every time you testify of Jesus, are you listening to me? You create an atmosphere for a duplication of that miracle in your life again and in the life of another person. It says testimonies about Jesus, they are prophetic in nature. That means they have the capability of replaying themselves in the future. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So when David stood before Goliath, don't think David was just laughing. He was a man like every other person. And he looked and he drew from the archives of his testimony. He said the one who delivered the lion, come on, the one who delivered the bear, he began to encourage himself with those. He was prophesying. He said the one who did it in the past. I, I want a replication of that testimony in the future now. The testimony of Jesus. This is why sometimes you hear us say the things that God did in the past because we expect him to reproduce it again. Hallelujah. The testimony of Jesus. There are many of you, the last time you received a certain testimony, that was the last time you had it. You did not maximize the testimony as a prophetic ladder to launch yourself to a new realm. Take seriously what I'm saying. It's very powerful. Many of you refuse to come and give testimony and say, I don't want to sound proud. But you see, whenever we say write prayer requests, you don't hide it, do you? You write all your prayer requests. Life partner. Job. I'm struggling with this habit. This and that. You are quick to write your requests. But you are slow. You say, should I testify? Should I not? And then you find out that for a very long time, there's no reproduction of testimony in your life again. There are, have you seen certain people again and again on stage? You are even tired of them. Every time you see them, you see this brother again. You are laughing at him, but he is always coming back. Are you not seeing the principle? N notice. No, I, I'm, I'm being very honest here. Do you notice that there seems to be a repetition? You see a brother comes to give a testimony about the faithfulness of God in the family. Oh God, open up a door. God did this. And you laugh at him. And next week again, you see him. And you are laughing and mocking and you sit down there, you are angry and say, God, why won't you visit me? God said, you did not honor me. The purpose of the testimony that I gave you was to encourage someone. Every time you are standing and you say, I had a lump and the lump disappeared. Somebody who just came for koinonia with a lump say, are you joking? You mean lumps can disappear? The testimony of Jesus. You are creating an atmosphere for that same miracle to be reproduced. And the person will say, I had this testimony. I'll never forget the testimony of Steve Strings. When it was time for, for um, admission, first list came out. His name was not there. This was his, the story he told me. Second list came out. His name was not there. Hallelujah. Then we went for service in Kwangila, living faith. And he had someone, someone testifying that he went around Senate seven times. And when the second list came out, he got his admission. What happened? Steve said, that is it, the spirit, the testimony of Jesus. Steve String said he went around Senate for this, waiting for the third list. And when the third list came out, his name was there. You see, when you testify, you don't just tell people what God has done. You tell them what you did that brought the result. So somebody will look and say, ah, so God is faithful. Hallelujah. A job opportunity came and two of you were there and maybe you sacrificed it for somebody else. Then a greater job came. Somebody will now learn a principle from it. Are, are you following me now? I will declare the name of the Lord before my brethren. 
in the midst of the congregation will I praise you. Psalm 22 verse 22. Never forget this scripture. I choose to be thankful. When you are not thankful, you will keep getting angry at those who are testifying and say, why are they boasting? Are they lying? God bless them. What do you want them to say? Keep quiet like you are doing and stop the Lord from being glorified. Someone comes and says, God, open a door for our family. God, wipe the tears of my mother. God, wipe the tears of my father. And people see, every time you see people testifying, don't just get angry and say they are bragging. You don't know where they were before the miracle came. Hallelujah. The Bible says rejoice with them that rejoice. When you hear a testimony, don't just look and say this person self. You are always talking. Why don't you celebrate and say, Lord, I rejoice with this person. The same God who did it for sister A. The same God who did it for sister B. The same God who did it for this family. At least I know this family when they used to go to the well to fetch water. Now they have their own house living in a bowl. I know this woman who was barren for eight years. Now see how with children. I rejoice. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So I want to encourage you because the Lord told me that many people are grateful but we are not thankful. That's why I decided to take these few minutes to teach you. Because you see, every time God rebukes a ministry is the leaders that are to be blamed. Hallelujah. If I don't teach you, there's no... God cannot blame you and hold you accountable. When he fell, who did God go to? Was he blind? Didn't he see Eve? Said, Adam, what happened? Adam said, the woman. Oh, may I not say the people. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Say, Lord, I receive grace. I receive courage. I know that many of you, many of you are ashamed. You are just saying, I, I don't speak English very well. Who cares? Say it in house, huh? Or say it in your language and call an interpreter. Oh, yes. Who, who paid your transport to come here that will eye you? Who was there when you were crying? Speak whatever you can speak and give God thanks. See, don't put yourself under unreasonable, ridiculous pressure. We are excellent people, not stupid people. Are you listening to me? Don't come and say, see my shirt, this material that I bought, self. everybody knows. It has been lying down in Sabo, there is me that came and carried it. Now I want to come and stand and disgrace myself. People worry about all kinds of useless things. And that's why they don't testify. My Yvonne has been there for how many years? Yeah, I see my beard. He said, I will declare your name before the brethren. Hallelujah. We're going to pray before we go to the teaching tonight. Say, Lord, I receive grace. Grace. Go ahead and pray. Make sure you are praying. Kappa Lakota Silamaya. Say, Lord, I repent for trivializing your works in my life. I repent for trivializing your works. I thought you would be arrogant if I testify. But right now, Lord, I know that I've been robbing myself and robbing other people of the opportunity for seeing new dimensions. Go ahead and pray. Say, Lord, I receive grace to be faithful. My testimony I now know it will bring you honor and glory. I now know that it will prove to men that you can be trusted and that your word is true. I now know that it will act as a seal to my miracle. I now know that it will create an atmosphere for that testimony to be duplicated in my life and duplicated in the life of others. Go ahead and say, Lord, I receive grace. According to Psalms 22 verse 22. Never forget it. This is the anchor scripture. Psalm 22 verse 22 that I will declare your name before the brethren your praise before the congregation of God's people I refuse to be ungrateful I develop a healthy Christian culture the Bible says and they overcame them by the blood of the lamb and the words your words of testimony have an overcoming ability in the spirit Lord as a house we pray we will not just be grateful but we will be thankful from today oh God 
we make it a point of duty to testify to rejoice to notice the things that you are doing in our midst and lord will give you praise father we release you to keep doing more and bring a performance in every area of our lives keep praying one more minute say lord i make up my mind some of you need to pray against timidity say god has not given me the spirit of fear speak to yourself say that devil of timidity or that lukewarm attitude that makes me trivialize what god is doing in my life and in my family and in my business and in my ministry and in your academics in your job whatever lift your voice and say lord i see what you are doing and i let the congregation know you are faithful i will not let unbelievers doubt your faithfulness whereas you are alive and walking pray pray for koinonia say lord as a family of faith we will not keep quiet over what you are doing men may call it pride they may call it arrogance but we will declare that the nations will know you are alive our god is not dead the wonder walking one is not dead say lord i receive courage to create an atmosphere and let people know how god brought me out of the dunghill and set me upon a place of glory how he changed the story of my family how he made a way where there seemed to be no way how that the words that were spoken here found expression in my life for your glory oh god so i desire to give you the praise and lord we will not relent we take it as a kingdom culture that from today as a family of faith like never before we will declare your praises we will not hide what you are doing in our midst the bible was written because men testified of what god did in their lives they were not careful to write it they said it as it is they said the red sea parted he gave them bread he gave them quails he made a way where there was no way they did not hide it jesus multiplied bread he didn't hide it it was said and today we are blessed it is as a result of the testimonies of yesterday that we know today that Jesus Christ is the same. Yesterday, today and forever. We will not stop many from saying Jesus is the same. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I release grace upon you to declare the wondrous works of the Lord in the name of the Lord Jesus. And any door of testimonies that has been closed over your life because of your negligence, I pray that it be open tonight. In the name of Jesus. The Bible says, you put a new song in my mouth. A song of praise to our God. Many will see and will fear and put their trust in him. He said, you will put a new song, not an old one. A new song in my mouth. A song of praise to our God. Many will see. They will tremble and fear. And say this God is a wonder working God. And as a result they will put their trust in him. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Lord we thank you. We are out of time. Quickly let's get to the business of the night. How many of you were blessed? You received something? Do something with the word. It's not just they that hear. The, the Bible didn't say the NS creation is waiting for the manifestation or the explanation of the sons of God is waiting for those who will do put the word to work hallelujah all right let's look at our text quickly well look we're examining the full gospel the whole truth about the priorities of God hallelujah what was our text? Revelations 19. Hallelujah. For time's sake, I may not go there. I want to do a quick review for those of you who were not there. Please, everybody, try and get the teachings. They are powerful. Hallelujah. And the Bible says, talking about the bride of Christ, the Lamb's wife, he said the city was four square. 
equal in length equal in breadth equal in depth no part no exaggeration hallelujah and we began to explain the fact that there has been there are three problems with the nigerian church number one an exaggeration of certain truths and doctrines number two uh, and on the emphasis of certain truths and number three a misplacement of god's priorities hallelujah and i began to teach how that on careful examination of the nigerian church there are seven major doctrines that make up the nigerian church every church in nigeria has one or more of these as their emphasis hallelujah number one is the gospel of grace the grace message we examine the grace message hallelujah how that is founded upon ephesians 2 verse 8 we are saved by grace through faith not of works and we explain how that the grace message seeks to explore the dimension of god that supplies grace for the journey ahead and we said how that that doctrine is not wrong it's very very important ephesians 1 2 and 3 tells us how that we have been seated with christ and that there is a dimension of god that opens us up to the grace of god an act of his sovereignty he has no business with what we have done or what we didn't do hallelujah and we stress that the area of balance there is the fact that the word grace there is twofold one is unmerited access the second one is the ability to do and that's where the church body has missed it hallelujah and so we have a an over stretching and we do not bring the grace message properly in context and i said that if the grace message is not balanced it will produce a lazy and an irresponsible church because if you understand the grace message and it stands alone without other revelations giving it a richer meaning you will feel that there's no need to pray there's no need to fast there's no need to study after all the race is not to the swift the battle is not to the strong so why must you prepare the bible says the horse is prepared for the day of battle but safety is of the lord so why prepare the horse when safety is of the lord hallelujah he said except the lord watches over the city the watchmen watch in vain so if god is watching over the city why will the watchmen be watching the grace message in itself is not all there is and if you leave it um, alone in itself it will lead to a lot of errors hallelujah then we looked at the word of faith hallelujah how that the bible says the word is nigh thee romans 10 it said the word is nigh thee even in thy heart and in thy mouth the word of faith which we preach that if thou shall confess with your mouth the lord jesus and believe in your heart that god raised him from the dead thou shall be the word there is soteria hallelujah there are two basic words there are many words really but two basic words are translated saved or salvation one is sozo that has to do with healing the manifestation of god's power with respect to his healing ministry and the other one is soteria soteria means deliverance prosperity you name it hallelujah and we examine that the word of faith seeks to bring the revelation to the body of christ that there is a relationship between the creative power of the spoken word and what we get hallelujah genesis 1 and he said and he saw he said and he saw ezekiel 37 i prophesied as i was commanded and i heard hallelujah mark eleven twenty three. have the faith of god if thou shalt say to this mountain be thou removed and casted into the sea and will not doubt in your heart but believe that the things which you sayeth will come to pass you will have whatever you say hallelujah bible says the just shall live by faith he said we should hold fast our profession of faith so the word of faith seeks to open the body to the revelation that um if you do not speak the bible says for by thy words you are justified and by that word you are condemned they say where the word of a king is there is power the power of words the creative power of the spoken word and then an addition to it came when 
a great father of faith, Oral Roberts, came to a point where he found out that you can engage the principle of Genesis 8.22. That as far as the earth remains, seed time and harvest. And so on shall not cease. And he found out that when you, when you add to your speaking, you tie a seed and tie it to the law of seed time and harvest. He saw that his results were amplified. Because he was engaging a principle that God had put. And it became the core teaching of the word of faith. How that you speak, you release the creative power of God's word. Hallelujah. And then you back it up with a seed, an expression of your, your heart and your sacrifice. And we examine that this is a dimension that is obtainable in God. The only challenge that the word of faith um, brings to the body, if not handled carefully, is that I said it last week because or week after week before last that because of the lucrative nature are you listening to me people come and sow seeds and i mean why will the man of god not enjoy this dimension of ministry if every sunday you are sowing seeds and you are bringing i can use different scriptures to manipulate you into giving all kinds of seeds and so on and so forth we'll talk more on that in the gospel of prosperity so there has been a, an abuse of the manifestation and people just come and they just talk it, talk it, talk it, talk it. And they don't do anything. They don't abide by the principles. The Bible says in Deuteronomy 28 verse 1, it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord to observe and to do, not to speak, to observe and to do all that I commanded this day, that all of these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you hallelujah so there is an observance joshua 1 verse 8 this book of the law shall not depart from out of thy mouth that's one he said but thou shalt meditate during day and night that thou mayest observe to do observe to do all that is written therein he said then shall your ways be prosperous and you shall have good success joshua 1 verse 8 so we saw that it's not just enough to just talk 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 and say now that i've spoken and i've dropped a seed everything is all right it is not necessarily true hallelujah that there are principles that we need to engage in right so that was the summary of the word of faith the tape is there you can get it the gospel of holiness hebrews 12 verse 14 pursue peace with all men and holiness without which no man will see god and i taught us that men began to explore certain dimensions of god because of the outbreak of carnality in the church we had all kinds of things the house of god being turned into a den of robbers being turned into a place of joke and play you know and christ is not exalted it's not lifted and certain people began to question and say no 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 because of the abundance and blessings that god was bringing to people people forgot about god you know and they began to serve themselves build empires for themselves and the bible says and holiness without which no man will see god hallelujah and i buttressed on what holiness was i think let me just state it very clearly i said holiness is twofold number one holiness is the reality that is furnished in the human spirit as a result of the presence of the holy spirit he's first called holy before spirit hallelujah scriptural proof exodus chapter 3 moses sees a bush he had been there all the time a dirty bush and is now on fire and will not be burned and he comes near and the lord tells him remove your shoe for where you stand has suddenly become a holy ground nobody swept it nobody cleaned the leaves the presence of god makes things holy so when he comes upon you that nature of holiness comes upon you and then i told us that there is a second dimension and this is where a lot of people um do not are not careful to observe the balance hallelujah the book of Zechariah, the Bible talks about Joshua, the high priest. He said, he was standing before God, although he was a high priest, his garment was stained. And Satan came to accuse him. And what happened? The Bible says Satan was rebuked. Correct? 
But God did not leave him that way. He said he should remove the garment. So there is a doing. Are you listening to me? On account of what Christ has done, there is an enabling grace to walk. The Bible says, come out from among them and be ye separate and touch not the unclean thing. And we did examine certain things, how that living a life of holiness is cardinal to receiving the blessings of God. The Bible says, if all our hope is in this life alone, we are of all men most miserable. So we, we emphasized separating religion from holiness. And then we express the fact that the ultimate goal of holiness is not to compare people to people and say this person is doing this, this person is doing that. But that a life of true holiness brings you to a point where you have love for people. If you claim to be holy and you do not love God's people, you are a hypocrite. Hallelujah. I'm running because I, I need us to... Then we got to the teaching on Satan, demons and deliverance. What is theologically called demonology. The study of Satan, the operation and the organization of the satanic kingdom. Hallelujah. I expressed to us that certain believers began to explore God. And this dimension was opened primarily by prayer and prophetic ministries. Because of their natural inclination to the realm of the spirit. Either through visions, through dreams, through prophetic encounters. Spending hours and days in the spirit. And so their eyes will be open and then they will have a lot of encounters. Hallelujah. And they began to find out that certain teachings that seem to trivialize some things about Satan and the knowledge of spiritual things um, were not exactly correct for the body of Christ. 2 Corinthians 2.11 is the anchor scripture. It said, for we are not unaware of the devil's devices. So the Bible tells us that um, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers against rulers of darkness and against spiritual wickedness in the heavenly places hallelujah and great servants of god like dr dk olukoya and cac and great prayer ministries began to explore this dimension of god and they began to tell the body hey 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 hold on you people are trivializing too many things i think you should reconsider one or two things Especially for the teachings that say, I want someone is born again, you are in Christ. That's all right, nothing. But they found out that certain people who, although they were born again, although they were tongue-talking, they, they saw certain levels of demonic influences in their lives. And it began to raise questions. And these men saw in the spirit that there are pastors who were still suffering with things like masturbation, suffering with things like a gay lifestyle and the rest. He said, but these guys are anointed. They are healing the sick. That means that there is something more. Are you following me now? And they began to explore to let us know that look, oh, this initial salvation is only the beginning. It's not the end. That Satan can be able to leech in the souls of men and that it takes the same power to be activated in the solical realm to bring a man to that dimension that his spirit has experienced. And so we began to explore scriptures like first peter 1 verse 9 he said receiving the end of your faith even the salvation of your soul and so we found out that the salvation of the spirit is not enough the bible talks about the salvation of the soul then it talks about the consummation of all things the salvation of the body hallelujah so it led people to begin to study how that there can be certain things that can exist like generational causes spirit husband spirit wife ancient curses and all kinds of things and over time, these men that explored this dimension brought forth certain levels of results. There were people who were delivered from the power of darkness and brought genuine testimonies that they were involved in causing some of these things. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And then we, we see that Jesus himself, I told you four things characterize the ministry of Jesus. Number one, he preached. Number two, he taught. Number three, he healed the sick. Number four, he casted out devils. This was consistent. Mark chapter one, Mark chapter two, Mark chapter three. You read all through, you see it. He preached, he taught, he healed the sick, he casted out devils. In Matthew chapter 10, when he was sending the disciples, he sent them forth and he told them, he said, go, heal the sick, cast out devils, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead heal the sick cast out devils 
when he was reading his mandate in Luke chapter 4 from verse 17 when the scroll the book of Isaiah was given to him. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me for he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor, to bind up the brokenhearted, to set the captives free. When he looked in Luke 12 to the woman who was bowed, he looked at her and from the spirit he saw that this woman had been tied. And he said, woman, thou art loosed from your infirmity. That means that infirmity was a spirit. The Bible says when he came back from his transfiguration, with Peter, James, and John. He saw the disciples struggling with one man's child. And the guy was epileptic. And the Bible says Jesus rebuked a deaf and dumb spirit from an epileptic patient. The Bible never tells us the guy was not speaking. But Jesus looked and saw that there was an operation and he could detect the spirit that was at work. On his way to Gadara, the sea began to be boisterous. And we understand that it was not just water. It was the demons who were trying to make the journey futile. Because as soon as he crossed to Gadara, a madman was waiting for him there. The Bible says the guy was mad and he stayed in caves. Who told him Jesus was coming? The first people to greet him was the legion, the man and the legions of darkness. Hallelujah. And so we see that it would be stupid for you to assume that it's not necessary. All these things, people are talking about demons. No, 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 no. The ministry of deliverance is key to the church. The church does not know so much about the ministry of deliverance. Either because it has not been taught properly or it has been exaggerated. And this is why we are considering the full gospel. Are you following me? We stopped from there last week, so let's continue. Help us, Holy Spirit. Facts about Satan, demons, and deliverance. Now... It's not my goal to make you angry tonight, but if that happens, please, I'm sorry. Let me apologize before time. Hallelujah. Because this is a sensitive topic and we're going to talk about it. And I'm going to say a lot of things that may not be... Um, uh, I know there are different churches represented here. There are deliverance ministries represented here. Whatever it is, let's look at the word of God. These are not my opinions. Hallelujah. Facts about Satan. Number one. Satan was an archangel. He was a cherub, really. The Bible calls him the anointed cherub that covereth. They fell from their original estate and were judged according to revelations. There was war in heaven and Satan, Lucifer, that was his name before the fall. The son of the morning, the Bible calls him. He was the cherub closest to God. An act of pride and rebellion got him to a point where he said, I will exalt myself above the stars of God. And there was war in heaven. The Bible says the dragon fought and Michael fought and he prevailed not and he was casted to the earth. And there was a lamentation, woe to the inhabitants of the earth. Because Satan had been casted to the earth. Hallelujah. And then he began to deceive man and so on and so forth. So number one, Satan is not omnipresent. He cannot be everywhere at the same time. Please deliver yourself tonight. Satan cannot be everywhere at the same time. Oh, Satan did this to me. No, it's not Satan. Hallelujah. Two, Satan is not omniscient. Satan does not know all things. Let me give you two scriptural proofs quickly. One from Old Testament, one from New Testament. When Moses was born, Satan had been scouting for the seed of the woman. He did not know exactly who the seed was. And he suspected it was Moses. So he moved through the heart of Pharaoh. And what happened? All the children were killed. That tells me there is a lot of experiment there. If Satan was omniscient, he will, knew ex he will know exactly. Is that correct? And then in... In, in, in the New Testament, when Jesus was born, same thing happened. You see that? Move through Herod. So Satan is not omni... is not omniscient. He doesn't know all things. That's not true. There are some things Satan does not know. Hallelujah. For instance, when we pray in tongues, there are some things Satan does not know. The Bible says, eyes have not seen. It didn't say human eyes. It said eyes. Any eye at all has not seen. Ears have not heard. Neither has it entered into the heart of any man. So Satan does not know what God has prepared for them that love God. It is exclusively the Holy Ghost. 
the way Satan knows the things that are, that are about to happen to you is because of certain operations that happen in the realm of the spirit. For instance, an unusual manifestation of angels. When they saw the star, Satan said something is happening somewhere. Start tracing the star. Hallelujah. <laughs> so for many of you who have been taught that Satan knows everything about me, it's not true. You may want to ask, so how do false prophets know certain things about people? It's a simple operation of spiritual laws. In this realm, we are bounded by three dimensions. In the realm of the spirit, there are more than three dimensions. Are you listening to me? And because of the existence of certain dimensions, you can tap into certain things, past, present, and future. These things are not necessary. They are not luxury in the realm of the spirit. And so by act of divination and sorcery, they can peep into certain dimensions of the future. And people can come in with some words. But it doesn't necessarily mean it's of God. Hallelujah. Moses threw his rod. He became a serpent. What happened? Pharaoh brought his own rod too and he became a serpent. Okay. Satan is not omnipotent. He's not all powerful. I beg you. Believe this revelation. Satan is not all powerful. I need to preach this to you. Because I'm irritated at the emphasis that people have given. Especially prophets. They talk so much about the satanic kingdom and how powerful Satan is. And I was in the spirit and I saw this great beast. I'm telling you, you cannot imagine. This beast was so powerful. And the people are watching it as if they are in a cinema. That's then and he came and the people are, are running back. They are saying, you mean the demon came? And you can't go back home again. Because in your mind, you are imagining that mental picture. So how is the tale like? And we use all kinds of graphic images in church. And we say, do I walk through the valley? And the person is imagining a valley. And forever they keep imagining a valley, even in the daytime. Hallelujah. It is true that we shouldn't be unaware of Satan's devices. But what is it about Satan that is important to the church? Quickly, Luke 10, 18. Luke 10, 18. We are exploring the word. Luke 10, 18. Well, let me start from verse 17. And the 70 returned with joy, saying, Hallelujah. Have you opened it? I want you to read it. Are you ready? Want to read? And the 70 returned again with joy saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us through thy name. Stop. He said, even who? Are subject to who? Us. Say, demons are subject to me. Say, demons are subject to me. The 70 came back and they were surprised. They said, ah, Lord, even the demons, we thought it's only, even the demons are subject to us. That means it wasn't only demons that were subject, because they even, that means they were so, there was something else. Hallelujah. And Jesus tells us what that something else is. 10 verse 19, or verse 18. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning. Do what? Satan is defeated. Say it after me. Satan is defeated. He is not being defeated. He is not going to be defeated. You must get this revelation. Satan has been defeated. So when we pray and when we declare God's word, what are we doing? We are establishing that victory in our lives. We are establishing it. Because Satan will not keep quiet. He will not give up. Although he's a defeated foe. He runs through and fro. Can I tell you something? Look up please. It is possible for a man to be free of the attacks of Satan. There's no time I would have shown you. Where Satan himself gave a testimony in Job chapter 1. Satan came, the sons of God gathered 
And the Bible says Satan was among them. And the Lord asked him, he said, where are you coming from? He said, to and fro proves that he's not omnipresent. Correct? He said, from moving to and fro the earth. He said, in the midst of your voyage around the world, did you ever come across a man called Job? He said, of course. And Satan said, I testify that I could not do anything about that man. He said, have you not blessed him and built a hedge round about? In other words, Satan tried through every means. And he said, I give up. And he was reporting Job to God. He said, it is true that a man can be so fortified that I did not penetrate him. So keep that teaching that tells you that, oh, one day somewhere, no. It is possible. Jesus lived that kind of life. Say amen. amen. Say after me, Satan is falling. 19. Oh, let, let's leave 19. We are coming back there. The ministry of deliverance. What is deliverance? Please look up comes from the word deliver what does he mean to deliver ladies what is what does he mean to deliver are you joking what does he mean to deliver it doesn't necessarily mean to bring forth it means to take out of where the person is it's not everything you bring forth some things leave you don't bring forth demons you bring forth miracles you bring forth new levels you cast out demons hallelujah so deliverance is um, the operation of the anointing of the spirit or the operation of the Holy Ghost that separates a man from whatever challenge whatever demonic influence or satanic predicaments that attempt to influence that person's life by the name and the power of the Holy Spirit. It's called deliverance. Hallelujah. And the Bible says. Obadiah 1.17 Upon Mount Zion. There shall be deliverance. And there shall be holiness. And because of the deliverance. And the holiness. What will happen? The people of God will possess their possessions. That means. Between you and your possession, at times Satan will stand to block. But when there is that deliverance, deliverance does not necessarily mean taking a demon out of a man. Hallelujah. Deliverance means being saved, preserved, taken away from situations that will stop you from walking in the reality of what God has destined for you. Hallelujah. We see deliverance all over scripture. In Matthew 8 verse 16 the Bible says and he casted out the devils with his word. Psalm 107 verse 20 he sent forth his word and his word he led them and delivered them from all their destructions. He sent forth his word. Hallelujah. So it's very very important. I need you to know this. Demons exist. Satan exists. And there's all kinds of strata of satanic kingdom. What's their job? To thwart the plan and the agenda of God. The universal counsel of God. And to thwart the destinies of men. They use all kinds of things. Sickness, failure, delay, defeat. Everywhere you just name it. There are numerous demons and spirits and all kinds of things. In one man, there was a legion. You can imagine. One man. A legion in one man. It tells you how many they are. But just when the servant was overwhelmed by the army, Elijah said, oh God, open his eyes that he will know. I hope you realize that Satan fell with one third of the angels. That means there's two thirds. For every one demon, one fallen angel, there are two angels that are alive and strong. And the Bible did not tell us God has stopped creating them. He said, for thou hast created all things. He said, they are and 
They were and are being created. God has not stopped creation. Are you listening to me? It is exclusively within his ability to keep creating. For he upholds all things by the word of his power. Are you getting blessed? So this is very important for you to know. Can you imagine? I thought we'd be able to cover so much. Okay. So the ministry of deliverance is not to be despised. There are many of you that have certain challenges and habits and things in your life. And you need the intervention of God. You need the intervention of the word. Listen to me. The primary tool of deliverance is God's word. Say God's word. Not prophets. Not mantles. Not, not pure water. Not anointing oil. Those things are prophetic symbolisms. Are you listening to me? We are not castigating them. If they are used with revelation, they can produce results. But I'm saying you need to realize, I've done a teaching about the word of God, the living logos. Please get the teaching. He casted out the devils with his word. Hallelujah. So how do we get free from the influence of demons? Oh, hold on. I need to tell you this. There are three levels of demonic operations and influences over the lives of people. Number one is what we call possession. Total control of that individual. That's what we get in the case of those who have sold their souls to devils. Sorcerers, certain witches who have made covenants with their, they've sold their soul literally. They are under the full weight and the influence of demons. They have become oracles. Hallelujah. The remedy for that that level of acute possession in your spirit is new birth, salvation. Let me tell you something. No matter how much you lay hands and cast out devils from a man, if that person is not born again and he does not accept the lordship of Jesus Christ, you only wasted your time. I have found out that many deliverance ministries are not concerned about the salvation of the victims. They are just concerned about manifestation. Hold on, we are getting there. There is the doctrine of power and the charismatic move of the spirit. We are going to get there. There are many people who are just excited. <laughs> and people just cough out all kinds of things. And the prophet is laughing, he's standing. King of kings and lord of lords. Two weeks again, you see the same person come back full of demons. Because Jesus gave us a mystery. He said when a demon leaves a man, what happens? He goes through arid regions looking for a place of refuge. And not finding any. What happens? He says, let me arise and go back to my house. He called it his house. So that means that you have been delivered. Does not mean Satan will stop seeing that it's his house. As far as he's concerned, he went on sabbatical. He said, let me visit again. And find out what is happening. He said he will come and find it swept. Clean, but what? Empty. And the Bible says, behold, I stand and I knock. There is a vacuum that only Jesus Christ can fill. There are many deliverance cases that the solution is for the people to be born again. Hallelujah. I've led people to Christ and the moment they are confessing Jesus Christ, you see all kinds of manifestations, of course. Because light cannot dwell with darkness. Are you listening to me? So don't just get excited every time you touch somebody and the person starts manifesting and say, hey, snake, hey, tortoise, hey, cobra, hey, this, hey, that, hey, giraffe, hey, this. Beyond those manifestations, is the person born again? If the person is not born again, the demons run away because of the light and the anointing of God. But the person leaves and they will come back. So we have people consistently struggling. All kinds of people, they are not born again. They are not willing to be serious with God. Again and again, the same people coughing out tortoise, coughing out worms, coughing out everything that they can cough out. Nobody will buy any bucket here for any bunny.
And I mean what I said. I mean it seriously. Nobody is buying any bucket for anybody. The demons can go out. If you vomit, we'll pack it. But we will not encourage that manifestation. The demons can go out. You didn't necessarily eat anything for them to come. They can leave. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians 10 verse 4. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. You see the reason why I don't believe in all those carnal things because the Bible says it's not about carnal things. Ejimi gave us a story some years ago about, I think was it, um, she, he came to set the captives free. What's her name? Rebecca Brown. She came for a deliverance session in Lagos. And when she came, she said, remember the story? She said, in the name of Jesus, every demon here, go. And then when she finished preaching, Nigerians were disappointed. The prayer people say, nah, this thing has not finished. Then the pastor came up. Say, madam, thank you so much for what you have done. But in Nigeria here, we believe in warming ourselves. Well, everybody stand up. Come on. And when they shook themselves, more say, hey, it's now this thing has happened. Now, of course, oftentimes, because of the activity that happens, you can't just sit down and say, Satan, I would really love you to leave. Do you mind? It doesn't happen that way. Hallelujah. It doesn't happen that way. Psalm 66. He said, through the greatness of thy power. He said, how awesome are your works, O Lord. He said, through the greatness of thy power will thy enemies submit themselves to you. It won't just happen because you can laugh. Through the greatness. Power must be, exact, must be generated in the spirit. Through the greatness of your power will the enemies submit themselves. You don't just come and say, Satan. The Bible says no man will enter a house and spoil that house without first doing what? Binding the strong man. So when you see us praying and say, Satan, get lost. Oedeko wrote a book called Satan, get lost. Many of you say, yeah, all these things are unnecessary. Okay. Oh. Praise God. How do we get free from Satan? James 4 verse 7. This is the major reason why Satan has access to the lives of people. Let's run. James. James 4 verse 7. Anybody there? Please. Hold on. Submit yourselves therefore. This is, this is God now giving us a recommendation through his servant. Yes sir. He says submit yourself therefore to what? To God. Hold on. Many people resist the devil and he doesn't flee. You know why? We don't complete that scripture. What's the first step? Submit yourself. He said, come under his governing authority. Submit yourselves first to God. And then when that has been done, he said, resist the devil and he will flee. You see where we have been missing it? Oh, Satan, I bind you. Oh, Satan, I bind you. Oh, Satan, I beg you. Oh, Satan, please, please, please. Oh, yeah, please, please. And I will not shout again. Just go. There are many of you. Well, I don't believe here, but there are many believers suffering from all kinds of things. Many of you cannot sleep in the night. I told you I used to be oppressed by demons. True life story. As soon as I lie down to sleep, I would literally, spirit, they will just enter my room. Free flow. I don't know whether it was because of me or my unbelieving roommate. But I was also not a believer, you see. I, I mean, I was born again, but it used to be very bad. Every time it was evening, I, I would just know that this is, it was in court, Lontenese court. Light entered my spirit. Hallelujah. I found that scripture that said, I have given you authority. Luke 10, 19. This is Jesus speaking. Behold, I give you power over snakes 
Come on now, snake spirit. Over snakes. Thank God he was the first to be mentioned there. Scorpions. And how many? All. Say after me, all. Because for some of you, it's some. Over all the powers of the enemy. He said, and nothing shall by any means. You are English students and you went to school. What does any means mean? Any method. Any way. Through food. Through dream. If I have a dream and I eat, I sure know that it's God that gave me that food. No devil will give me anything to eat. But there are many of you that dream and you see all kinds of satanic things. And you laugh about it, but it's really satanic because you've not taken your ground. Let me tell you something. Take this thing seriously. Many of you have not taken out time to address some things in your life. You keep laughing about it and you say it's not serious. I warned the devil since. I warned him since. Hallelujah. You must take some time. Maybe this will be the week that you go and lock yourself alone. And say, Satan, men of God have been speaking to you on my behalf, but I want to talk to you by myself today. Let me tell you something. This is the first. No, well, it's not the first. This is the last time. Enough of that devilish oppression. And you don't just speak and say, because my name is Joshua. The word, it is written. It is written. Authority have been given unto me against principalities, against powers. And in the name of Jesus, I confront this devil. I confront this situation. Lift up your heads, O ye gate. You need to settle some things in your life. Many of you just watch things happen. Things are not going right and you are just laughing. You just say, one day, I know my God is alive. You will be very surprised. If you don't take a step, the Bible says the people saw Jesus Christ and they tore the zinc and said, we have given ourselves the date of miracle today. Are you listening to me? Some of you need to go and lock up yourself and find scriptures and end some things in your life once and for all. Say amen. There are many preachers who will not admit this. But you look at their lives and you see them being victims of certain things. Although they are preachers. Although they are men of God. They can't look at a lady and go free. Lie, lie. They can heal. They can do everything. That you are a new creation in Christ. Listen to me. That you are a new creation in Christ. Does not mean you stand and stand upon God's word. But let me tell you what I do not believe about deliverance. Listen to me. I can't be binding Satan every day of my life. There are more important things to do. It's not a sin. But it's a weight that can be done away with. There are many of us that all we think about is Satan. What he can do. I woke up this morning. I listened to a man of God. He said he went somewhere and before the meeting they bounded and casted devils. And then he was going to have a meeting with the leaders and they were bounding again. He, he called the pastor. He said I thought we just did that some hours ago. Listen. Many of us have insulted God too much. We make it look like if you ask, God is helpless. Satan can bounce into your life any day, any time. Look up, please. Somebody moves on the road and matches a charm, correct? Did the person believe the charm will affect him? But the charm still affects him. So if Satan can veto somebody's faith and step in, and God takes his reputation. Somebody matches a charm without knowing. And suddenly his legs start swelling. This is Satan. Making your faith nonsense. And then the Bible calls the word of God a more sure word of prophecy. And then we do it and say just hold on. You don't know how Satan can come. I mean this life. 
Don't insult my God. Are you listening to me? Don't insult my God. I believe I have taken many poisons in my life. We've gone from place to place. I've eaten everything they gave me. It's only when we get to heaven or one day God opens my eyes that I will see. I may not know how many people have taken my names to native doctors, shrines. I know I've seen it a number of times. <laughs> see, let me tell you something. Change your mindset. Tell your neighbor, change your mindset. Philippians 4 verse 8. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are, are lovely, whatsoever things are noble, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, what did he tell you to do? Think on these things. What are you thinking on? Many of us are angry with our roommates, angry with our friends. Your life has become madness because everything you see, you see dust on your shoes, you look and say, this dust, why is it on one side? Oh God, clean your shoes and move forward. Don't make God look like an idiot. He gave you authority. Regardless of what it is, you have authority. A lot of people come to cast out devils. Who are you? What is your name? When did you enter this body? What did you do this? They may not be, it may not be wrong, but it's a weight. I tell you the truth, it's a weight. If we spend, I've, I've seen meetings, we spend hours doing deliverance and we spend so little time teaching the word. A man of God is prophesying from morning till evening and then they just do a little exhortation of 20 minutes and the prophet said, now I need to move in my office and people say yes. They would die as a congregation. It's the word of God. You see, I found your word and I did eat them. Hallelujah. You empower the church by giving them the revelation of God's word that will set them above. Are you listening to me? So I have a serious problem with ministries that all they do, all they do morning till night, all they do is just prophecy and casting out devils. Demons are rolling morning till night. Can't the people be taught the word of God? Do you really believe in the power of the word? Now, I'm not saying there's no place. There is, we do that miracle service. But we spend three weeks doing what? Teaching you the word. It says you are clean through the word that I've spoken unto you. Sanctify them by thy truth. Thy word is truth. You must get to a point where you are full of God's word. Only God knows how many charm we have matched. Only God knows how many. They found a snake one time in my ceiling. And they called some people from ABU to come. Okay, I don't know who was around. They came and did the, the, the I didn't know they used jazz. I asked the guy, where is the this thing for this? He just brought out one thing and showed me. I said, hey, my man. I said, one that shall never end. We'll see. The guy was disappointed. The guy was, that thing didn't work. Oh, it didn't work around my vicinity. It didn't work. The light shines in darkness. I said, because the guy swore he put that in. He said, we won't see that snake. In the evening, I saw the snake again. And God was letting me know that this thing that happened is drama. The guy vowed. The neighbor said that every time the guy comes, he's a popular guy. He calls the snake by their jars and the snake comes out that guy called the snake they, fume, they put all kinds of things it didn't work and I said alright Lord St. Patrick casted out snake from Ireland I just need it around my vicinity don't come back here again hallelujah do you believe this I have given you authority let this enter your spirit you are a bank of power I have given you authority. Believe it. One of our ladies went to a native doctor one time. For whatever reason, I do not know. The guy said she should bring 30,000 and goat and other things. And then he gave her something to go and bath with. And when she went to bath with, it disappeared. 
She ran to him and said, Ah, Baba, it has disappeared. He said, Ah, there's trouble. And then she just said, You come and confess and meet me. When she met me, I said, Go and tell the native doctor. I'm not going to pray for you first. Go and tell him that Joshua Selman said he should check in the realm of the spirit and see the person talking to him. That if she ever harass you again, they will take his dead body out of his shrine. If you have not seen the burning bush, don't stand before Pharaoh. You will die like a chicken. Hallelujah. We have gone for crusades, men of God. And we have seen the wonder-working power of God. You see us cast out devils after koinonia. And I have a sound sleep given by God every night. If I'm awake, it's because I'm walking. If the devil wakes me, I won't wake up. I will ask him what is what consign Agbero with overload. I won't quarrel him and say, ah, go, go. <laughs> Just please, get out of my presence. I mean what I'm saying. Many of you say, keep talking like this. I'm, I've been saying this thing for years. Is it not true? I've been saying this thing for years. Please ask them. They will confirm it. Today we are flying on the wings of evil of, of eagles as if Satan does not exist. You think it's his goal for you to come here? Look at the salvations and the rest. So that devil that has been knocking your zinc, ask him, come down. Come down. Why are you disturbing me? He wants to put in you the spirit of fear. How do you react? Hey, no. Shakata bakato balakaya. God has not given me the spirit of fear. But the spirit of love, power, and of a sound mind. And you say, in the name of Jesus, I declare sound sleep this night by the power of the Holy Ghost. And you lie down and sleep. Don't go for a crusade and come back and start crying and say, hey, there's going to be a fight back. I said it when we were preparing for Pangshin Crusade, if you remember. I said, Satan has always wanted to kill you. He didn't just start liking to kill you on your way to a crusade ground. Let me tell you something. A trace of Satan's wickedness is seen in Boko Haram. They will kill anybody when they have the opportunity. That Satan has not killed you. It's not that he doesn't want to. He cannot. We travel all the time to different places. I've said it here. Even if Satan drives my car, I will go. I will tell him, take me to so 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 place. Ah, Josh, are you not afraid of Satan? This is the mindset I want to deliver you from. That mindset. Say, look at the statements you are making. They are hearing you. Oh. There was, there was a confession now. There, was a, there are some people that used to come for koinonia. One occult person. He came and met me one time to confess. He's not around. They said they have been watching me for years. That's what he said. They said they watched me when I went to South Africa. While I was snapping with Kobus, they were watching. When I was having my retreat. He said, we watched you. For 72 hours, your eyes did not see daylight. We watched you when you were praying. Beginning to end. And I, my mind, I say, happy viewing. I asked him, no, I asked him a question. Listen, listen. Truth story. I think his brother may be here. I said, when you people come for Koinonia, what happens to you? He says, they hang on from a far distance and stand and watch because of the fire of God. How many of you remember the guy, Sadiq Ibrahim? Remember his story? Sadiq Ibrahim was outside. This guy slept in the graveyard for three days to collect the power of invincibility. Three days he was outside. When I stood on the platform here, what happened? He said, when he saw people falling, he looked and he said, yes, there's power in this place. He said, whether it's demonic power or whatever power, there is power. Because he has slept and he knows the equivalent of the sacrifice it takes to get that power. Let me tell you something, friends. Not all human beings are equal. There are terrestrial beings. There are celestial beings. Ask demons time for demons and satan and nonsense he casted them with his word many of you have been watching demons fly freely in your family and you are just laughing what are you there for 
Say I have authority over Satan. Hallelujah. Ah, we don't have time. The, I really wanted to touch on the gospel of prosperity. I thought I'll be able to end tonight with the gospel of prosperity. It's nine o'clock already. Let me just see. We didn't even do anything. Oh, hallelujah! How time flies. So, why do you sleep in some of your churches? 30 minutes you are asleep. And you are looking at the time. I don't, I'm not mocking anybody, but I'm saying nothing can replace lack of fire. Not your suit, not eloquence, not shouting. Because I've seen a day boy, you just talk and threw out a Holy Ghost night with you. People are wide awake. And I've seen other people jacking and the other person is sleeping. It's until the pastor comes and says, I, I said this! And again, the guy wakes up. And he shouts alone, yes! And they say, yes, for what? <laughs> Hallelujah. That's why we pray. We don't want a fireless ministry. Hallelujah. Have you received something tonight? The word of God is supposed to make you powerful. I want you to leave here tonight with the revelation that you have authority over devils. If you don't believe this, I don't know how to help you again. We have magnified Satan too much. It's too much. It's even irritating. Too much. Many of us have the list of all kinds of demons in our books. How many names of God have you written in your book? Jesus defeated Satan. I was not there, but his spirit bears witness that he was not lying to me. And I believe it. Do you believe it? Saints of God, do you believe it? See, because we need to bring this issue of Satan and demons, we need to clarify it once and for all. Can you get angry with yourself and use this week to pray and say, Satan, I'm ready to stand upon the word of God. See, many of you go to Satan and when, when you get there or to wherever, you now start saying, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, leave. What is your scriptural basis? Say after me, it is written. That must be, there must be, the Bible says, Isaiah 40 verse 41. He said, present your case, said the Lord. Bring forth your strong reasons. Bring forth your strong reasons. Present your case. We used to call in, in the campus then, a, a court, long tennis court. What do you do in the court? It wasn't because they used to play basketball there. It was a place where we settle issues through the power of God's word. Those days you see people, somebody will come with his Bible and lie down first for two hours searching the scripture. One he has, he has, get, he has gotten it, he will line it up. And say, now hear me Satan, it is written. There are many of you who are dying of many things. Satan is having a free ride through your life. You say it's like that. In our family it's like that. When will it end? Hello? When will it end? He said, next miracle service will jump and come. And the demons stand there and wait. And you come and then they finish. They, they can't come here. I assure you, they won't come here. And then when you go back there, what happens? There are many of us, the, your own issue is you have refused to be born again. Every time they talk about being born again, you just say, no. My name is Joshua. And Joshua is the Hebrew form, Jehoshua the same as Jesus. I'm Jesus' namesake. And you will not get born again. The Bible says, in the day that you hear his voice, do not harden your heart. That's the problem with a lot of people. Oh, you are born again, oh, but you are not on fire. You are lukewarm. Satan can ride in and out of your life. Prayer life, zero. Word life, zero. Obedience to God's principles, zero.
Bishop Oedeko always says something that I love. He says, no matter how mad a man is, he will never enter fire by mistake. No matter. The guy is mad. They say, give way. If he sees fire, he will move this way. No matter how mad a man is, he knows fire when he sees it. And the Bible says, he maketh his angel spirits and his ministers, what? Flame. Like Reinhard Bonke, he says evangelism by fire. This is not just the kind of fire we preach today. That one is the real fire, real fire. Say I'm on fire for God. Say it, I'm on fire for God. See, you must be too hot for Satan. I pity the person who calls my name in a shrine. The, the shrine person will die for nothing. It's not that I kill the person. It's the natural consequence. I'm telling you, I believe in the power of the Holy Ghost. God cannot be lying. A man of God went for a meeting and they, when he came in the morning, he saw that they caught chicken. No, no. He just entered his room and came out and he saw chicken. He said, who dropped this chicken here? And then he smiled. He said, thank you, Jesus. He had been fasting and he had been praying. True life story. The guy was so happy said yes lord once again god used the stupidity of witches to answer the prayer of his servant the guy pieces that in and he ate it i'm telling you yes he did he ate it he gave thanks the bible says give thanks and eat we are going to pray he gave thanks archbishop benson idahosa he went to preach somewhere wild man on fire when he came out he saw a calabash he just clapped his hands he carried the calabash he said who dropped this calabash his fear was for the person not for himself he said who dropped this calabash everybody kept quiet he said i'm begging now who dropped this calabash because if I release it to fall down, the person will die. And that was how he released it. As soon as it dropped, the person died there. Hallelujah. I had a testimony that happened some months ago. I think a thief came to steal in Canaan land. And he was hiding behind a tree. And Oyedeko was speaking and he shouted from the altar and the man fell down there and died instantly. Instanta. He died there. Say, I'm too hot for Satan. Say it. Some of you are afraid of saying it. I have given you authority. That's why we smile our way to the miracle service every week. No pressure whatsoever. No pressure whatsoever. There are many men of God. When they come, you see them sweating. When they see some kinds of uh -uh. Bishop Oedeko had one guy who was harassing people and he told the guy enter the car he drove with him to one place by I think 12 or 1 a.m. in the night and told the witch to come out he told him come out he said now anything I tell you to do do it it's only me and here the Satan is called the prince of darkness here is dark me and you he said now lie down and the guy lay down he said where is he he said he cannot come here he said, as long as you are in the world, you are the light of the world. As long as you are in the light. As long as you are in the world. Believe this, brothers and sisters. Otherwise, your journey will be very long in life. Believe this. I refuse to believe. Nobody will preach me into exalting Satan above Jesus Christ. No, sir. See, let me tell you. I have seen demons in the spirit. Are you listening to me? Don't you think I'm just talking? Oh, I've seen demons. And they are intimidating. When you see the strong, there are certain demons that are about 32 feet. 32 feet, you see them. Well, Genesis 41. There was a man in the Bible called Joseph.
41, 36. From verse 36. Okay, let's read very quickly. This was Joseph now revealing and interpreting the dream of Pharaoh. Verse 36 says, And that food shall be for storage in the land against the seven years of famine, which shall be in the land of Egypt, that the land perish not in famine. Verse 37. The Bible says, And the thing was good in the eyes of Pharaoh and in the eyes of all his servants. 38. Can we read together if you are there? One, to read. And Pharaoh said unto his servants, Can we find such a one as this, in whom the Spirit of God is? He said, Can we find such a person? Joseph began to give an interpretation of the dream. And he said, This interpretation means there will be seven years of plenty, followed by seven years of famine. Now, Pharaoh, here is my solution. Find a man discreet and wise and set him over this project that during the seven years they will gather plenty and during the seven years of famine they will be able to enjoy. And Pharaoh said, who is the person? In other words, he threw a challenge to the entire Egypt. Can we find such a man? If you know you are that qualified, if you know you are that proficient, step up. No race was mentioned. He didn't say if you are an Egyptian or if you are a Jew. He said, can we find such a person? I want to bless that person. I want to lift and promote that person. But can we find such a diligent person? Such a skilled person? Such a proficient person? And the Bible says there was none. And then, verse 39. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, For as much as God has shown thee this thing, there is none such so discreet and wise as thou art. He was not just lifted because he was a he was a of, of the covenant and, and all of that. No, the Bible says the king testified, Pharaoh. He said, There is none, there is none who is as discreet and wise, and because of that. Verse 40, thou shalt be over my house immediately. No board meeting, no discussion. Are you getting what I'm saying? Thou shalt be over my house and according to thy word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne shall I be greater than thou. 41, and Pharaoh said unto Joseph, see, I have set thee over all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh took off his ring, a symbol of authority, and put it on Joseph's hand, and arrayed him in vestures of linen, and put a gold chain about his neck. 44, 43. And he made him to ride in the second chariot, which he had. And he cried before him, Bow the knee, and he made him ruler over all the land of Egypt. Verse 44. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I am Pharaoh. And without thee shall no man lift up his hand or foot in the land of Egypt. Look at that. 45 says, And Pharaoh called Joseph, you know, called him all the name, and he gave unto him his wife, Asena, and the daughter of Potiphera, priest of On. And Joseph went all over the land of Egypt, the last verse. And Joseph was how many years old? How many years old? Joseph was 30 years old when he stood before Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And Joseph went out of the presence of Pharaoh and went throughout the entire land of Egypt. Everybody say diligence. Say proficiency. Listen to me. The world that we live in right now, if you want the favor, favor, that's the reward system of the kingdom. The favor of God. Many people have been taught that favor just means unmerited access. I told you that you need to get my teachings, the full gospel. There I give you a balanced view of the dimension of God's grace and favor. Because I told you every Christianity that makes God absolutely responsible for the outcome of your life without a partnership on your own part is an irresponsible Christianity. Read from Genesis to Revelation. Every time God wanted to bless a man, he demanded partnership on his own part. Is that true? 
it's not all up to God and it's not all up to you. Your own part is to be diligent, to gain mastery. Hallelujah. I began to teach last week and I said that there are so many people in the body of Christ. They are poor, they are average, they are poor at their place of work, they are poor and, 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 and in, in, in different endeavors that they do. Different ministers of the gospel. They want crowd. They want grace. They want fame. They want popularity. But there is no diligence. No diligence. No mastery. Right? A man of God comes to stand on stage and says, Don't worry. Don't mind what I'm saying. Just believe that the power of God will touch you. Let me tell you something. When you see a congregation gather like this, they are a mixed multitude. Not everybody is a daft. Are you getting what I'm saying? There are people who walk with God. There are people who are intellectuals. There are people who are committed to making an impact. I told you excellence is a language. Those who are excellent understand the language. It calls a certain kind of people to your sphere of influence. Is God speaking to us now? God wants to prosper us. But let me tell you, our part of the equation is that we must contend for mastery. We must contend for diligence. Joseph, so many people in Egypt, the question I always ask is, didn't Pharaoh have a son? The Bible may not give us that record, but at least as a Pharaoh, he should be married. Is that true? For him to have neglected his son and to make Joseph a prize, it wasn't just because he loved Joseph. It was because if he did not exhort Joseph to solve that problem, Egypt would die in famine. Listen, let me tell you. Diligence will make men overlook your age. Diligence and mastery will make men overlook your gender. They will overlook a lot of flaws in your life because you have something that cannot be rejected. It's God speaking to us. Can we find such a man that is exceptionally excellent? Can we find that exceptional banker? Can we find that exceptional lecturer? Can we find that exceptional student? Can we find that exceptional man of God? Gone are the days where people think ministry is for daft people. You submit your CV. There's no job. They drive you everywhere. And you just say, well, since they've rejected me everywhere, let me go to the vineyard. Ministry is not for idiots. Ministry is not for foolish people. This is the wrong mindset that has been given about ministry. Whenever they see people going into ministry, they think that they have failed and they don't know what to do in their lives. They didn't give them a job and they said, let's go into the vineyard. The Bible says he gave unto one five. He gave unto one two. He gave unto one one act according to their several ability he had tested them through time and found out that some were more proficient than others you must hate and fight mediocrity out of your life especially in this season of God's glory hallelujah it's good to pray it's good to fast but you must be diligent you must be excellent. You must do everything you do with uncanny mastery. The minimum standard in the world today is mastery. Exceptional diligence. While others are looking for jobs and crying, there are other people jobs are looking for. I know someone in this country, I was sharing with the school of ministry students last year. He does three jobs and works only three times a day. His minimum salary for one of them is 500,000. Minimum. He does the job at his terms. The day he coughs, the whole company will go bankrupt. Everybody say mastery. Is God challenging us? When I came in, I was blessed when I heard our sister's testimony about the changes that was happening in our office. The Bible says you are the light. Say I am the light. You are the light does not just mean you are anointed. It means that you are exceptional enough. Listen, the key to kingdom advancement is gaining influence. I've told you this. The weapon 
of kingdom advancement is influence. Because influence is the ability, listen to me, influence is the ability to cause men to buy into your ideologies, to buy into your perspectives about life. When you are a man of influence, you sustain an ability that causes men to love your God, to love your principles. That's influence. The kingdom isn't just going to be advanced by sharing tracts. Right? And I told the Lord, I will never pastor a weak congregation. People who are broke, suffering, failures in life, but are just crying and say, Lord, we love you. Sooner or later, it will affect you. When there is no food in your house, you will not be able to fast. You see, the reason is because a number of people have others who are giving them money. Uncle or auntie. Remember we spoke last, last, um, last week, right? Dependency mentality. Take responsibility over your destiny and make up your mind to be diligent. A lot of people blame God and say, my, my boss is in the same koinonia with me and he can't lift me. He won't lift you because you are a member of koinonia. He will lift you because you are proficient and excellent. Praise the Lord. We're tired of the status quo. There's got to be more than this. There's got to be more. got to be more. There's got to be more than this. There's got to be more. got to be more. There's got to be more than this. You have to preach to yourself. I'm tired of the status quo. There's got to be more than this. There's got to be more, got to be more. There's got to be more than this. You must be excellent. You must be excellent. Be exceptional. What you are trusting God to use to feed you. What you are trusting God, the value that you think you are adding to men. Be exceptional. You claim God is calling you into the healing ministry. You are, you are average. The last time somebody got healed was five months ago. Right? No pressing. You, don't, you, are, not, you are not following the principles. There are so many men of God. I'm anointed. I'm anointed. You give them the mic. They make blunders on stage. No Bible study. Prayer life zero. Right? Their comprehension of the truth. They don't study books. They don't read. They sleep and snore like every other lazy person. You will never be given a ministry. No, sir. Ministry is the highest responsibility in this earth. A president can only rule for four years and, and drop or eight years maximum. A minister is an envoy. Call to prepare God's people. There are many business people. I want to be a businessman. You write it in your room. CEO. No mastery. No diligence. They talk, they cannot articulate their value. Let me tell you something. If we do not challenge ourselves, we will keep dancing around in church, but Babylon will feed us. And I told you, whoever feeds you is the one you bow to. No matter what you claim to do in church. Joseph. Same story with Daniel. He reigned through the dispensation of three kings and he was honored by them individually. Please refuse mediocrity. Challenge yourself. If God speaking to us, challenge yourself. First Kings 11. Let's quickly look at an interesting story again. First Kings chapter 11. Bible talks about an interesting man called Jeroboam. First Kings 11. Twenty six to twenty eight. You will have an encounter of a lifetime tonight, I tell you. Verse 26, are we there? It says, And Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, the Ephraimite of Zereda, Solomon's servant, whose, mother, whose mother's name was Zeruah, a widow woman, 
Even he lifted up his hands against the king. Now listen, there's no time to tell us the whole story. But the Bible tells us of the son of this widow called Jeroboam. And he said he was Solomon's servant. He was a servant. But watch what happened, verse 24. It says, and this was the cause that lifted up his hands against the king. Solomon built Milo and repaired the breaches in the city of David, his father. Verse 28. It says, and the man, Jeroboam, was a what? A mighty man of valor as a result. And Solomon, seeing the young man, that he was what? That he was what? He didn't say that he was anointed. He didn't say that he was a Jew. He didn't say that he was a male. He said he was a mighty man of valor. Do you know what it means for you to be called a mighty man of valor in ancient times? The Bible talks about the mighty man of David. One who fought single-handedly, threw down 800 people and a sword cleaved to his hands. The Bible talked about David of the tribe of Benjamin. The Bible tells us that the Benjamites, Bible history tells us that the, the Benjamites were so, were so fine in, in throwing slings, they could diverge an arrow with a sling. So it wasn't just that the anointing came upon David to kill Goliath. The anointing came upon something he had. Are you getting what I'm saying? Here the Bible says that Jeroboam was a mighty man of valor. And Solomon discerning that he was a mighty man of valor. What did he do? The Bible says in verse 28. Seeing the young man that he was industrious, advantageous. Made him ruler over all the charge of the house of Jesus. Seeing that he was industrious. He said no, 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 no. You can't be a, a servant just like the other people. You are so proficient beyond servanthood. And I lift you. You are the head of the house of Joseph. Diligence gives God room to bless you. Mastery shuts the mouth of critics. Mastery shuts the mouth of naysayers. You make the prophecy of your enemies a self-fulfilling prophecy when you waste your time arguing and defending yourself rather than sharpening your sword to gain mastery. Hallelujah. You must be proficient at your place of work, in ministry, in business. Pay the price. Don't run around looking for cheap success. Don't run around looking for quick money. Don't run around trying to claim what you are not. I've said it and I will keep saying it till it burns into you. Don't try to look successful. Pay the price and be successful. There are so many people who look successful. Like the fig tree that Jesus saw. But when he came, he found no fruit in it. I've made up my mind that in my lifetime, every area the lord wants to use me i will be like a sword that has been sharpened at its finest hallelujah a man of god god wants to bless you but there is no grace no revelation no the personal contributions you go for a meeting a major conference and waste the time of the people talking nonsense and at the end of it they say uh, thank you for coming Here's your honorarium. May the Lord bless you. And they will never invite you again. Never. God opened doors. You close them by yourself. Let me tell you. Both in the church and in the secular environment. The minimum standard is exceptional excellence. Minimum standard. Is God speaking to us? You're a hairstylist. Oh God, open the door for me. God is saying to wear. Make room for the blessing. Be proficient enough. Hallelujah. Please challenge yourself. Challenge yourself. There are many music ministers. You wrote a song. There is no standard to gauge the proficiency of the song. You to sing the song and hear what you wrote. Huh? And then, you see, the worst thing that can happen to you is to surround yourself with mediocres who are too ashamed to tell you the truth you come on stage and sing and make a lot of blunders and when you step down they say kai ken ah 
that song and say, really? You, you see how you are deceiving yourself? We, our standards are very small. So we, we feel a sense of satisfaction and accomplishment too fast. Because our standards are small. You're a man of God. You gauge yourself around with people who don't pray and are not serious. You lay hands on somebody and she falls down and you say emoji. Emoji compared to what? The day you go for a meeting, they bring a blind person. You pretend not to see the person. Praise the Lord. Oh, I have an apostolic. You go for a crusade, you see them. And you know the way, I love the way crusades are. They line the sick people. They are desperate. They say, man of God, there's somebody on the wheelchair here. Say, ah, did I ask you to bring the person out? Mastery. I love Jesus. Don't just think the Holy Ghost came upon him alone. The Bible says at age 12. Is that in your Bible? At age 12, Jesus sat down and began to articulate the writings of the prophets. The Pentateuch. This guy began to, he, he began to bombard the scribes and the Pharisees. What sort of boy is this? Don't waste the anointing. The anointing does not fall on nothing. The Bible makes us to understand in the building of the tabernacle, the glory of God never came until the tabernacle was built to specification. The last peg had to be put before they saw the glory of God. Hallelujah. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Excellence. Excellence in dressing. Excellence in your singing. Excellence as a student. Excellence as a worker. Excellence as a whatever it is you're doing. When people are clapping for you, if you don't run away from that place, you will soon die. Because the people who are clapping are only clapping out their frustration. Right? In a class where there are 100 students, and you write an exam, for instance, if the best student gets 11 over 100, if you do a speech and prize, who will take the first prize? It will be said he took first. Correct? But what grade did he get? Help me. So he can move around saying I'm the best student compared to what standard. Then the day you step out and meet others who are not joking. The Bible says study to show yourself approved. Kabbalah katayaba. A workman who needed not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth. Pay attention to diligence. Pay attention to diligence. Don't stop clapping for yourself when it's not time to clap for yourself. Hallelujah. Raise the bar. Thank God you are a local champion. In your community you are the best. See the nations. If you don't make room for the nations, you will never be beyond the nations. That's why there are pastors that will never pastor more than 50 members. More than 100 members. More than 500 members. More than 1,000 members. Because the capacity, they have not made room for the blessing. Is God speaking to us please? Don't just get angry and be frowning at your boss and say this man is so wicked. This guy just got a job. In two months, he's promoted him. Proficiency. Proficiency. Closely tied to that, I spoke about laziness. Oh, by the way, Proverbs 22 verse 29 says, See thou a man diligent in his business. It gives you an assurance. It says you will not stand before mean men. Average people. Once you are diligent, it will defy every other barrier and make sure you meet with the kings of that sphere of influence. I've met with people that ordinary my level in life would never qualify me to see them. Not even by accident. Challenge yourself. Challenge yourself. Laziness. Proverbs 10 verse 4. Many young people in Nigeria are lazy. Lazy. Mentally lazy. Spiritually lazy. Physically lazy. We're in a hurry to show quick success. 
We're in a hurry to show that things are working. Life is not like that. The Lord put this in my heart to talk to us about it and I will. Proverbs, Proverbs what? 10 verse 4, who is there? Some of you are still at Exodus, Proverbs, Proverbs after Psalms. Proverbs 10 verse 4, it says, He becometh poor that dealeth with a slack hand. But the hand of the diligent make it rich. He becometh poor that dealeth with a slack hand, a lazy person, no inertia. He becometh poor. The word poor there is not just financially poor. You become bankrupt in every area. Romans chapter 12 verse 11. I found a very good scripture for ministers. Romans 12 verse 11. Let's hurry up so we can have time. Romans 12 verse 11. Shiva la kura sibrania na malakaba. 12 verse 11. Are you there? Say amen. One to read. Not slothful in business. Fervent in spirit. Serving the Lord. He said not slothful. The word slothful there means laggy. You are, not, you are not giving life the kind of aggression it takes. Right? He said not slothful in business. Diligent, fervent, zealous in spirit. Serving the Lord. So you want to serve the Lord? You want to serve his body? You must be competent. Please hate average. Let me tell you something. As you are sitting down here, the number one thing that should happen to you this night is tell yourself the truth i've tried but compared to where god wants to take me the journey is still far it will help you to humble yourself whether they write apostle jakes bishop jakes right it's an ugly scene to see an incompetent person boasting it's a very ugly scenario my goal is that we'll have the brightest of the brightest and the best of the best. The head of, the head of um, technical is here. I went to pray for his office at the bio, bio what? Biotech, that biotech place. And when I went in, I looked at his office and I looked at everything. I said, wow. It's not about size. It's about content. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's about content. At least I know that there is a project that they are on now. Projects of, of hundreds of millions. Competence. When you become competent, let me tell you brothers and sisters. All of a sudden where you are coming from will never matter. Jeroboam, the Bible says his mother was a widow. Meaning she did not have the opportunity to do much. But competence. Please, there are many of us here, it is your competence that will wipe the tears of your parents. They didn't go to school. They done their best. Don't sit down in the average and keep forcing your mother, your father, the poor people doing their best. Rise up and change your status. Don't just sing it as a song. Is God speaking to anyone here? I read the story of Joseph so that it will minister to us because many of us are young people. Joseph was 30 years 30 years. And as a matter of fact, out of that 30 years, about 12 to 30 of that 30 years was spent as a slave. What is your excuse? You are a keyboardist. You are the only one who claps for yourself when you play. And you are angry and say, oh Lord, open doors for me. You see, the, the problem is, God does not want to disgrace his name. Are you getting me? Because you are an object of praise. Everything that leaves you reveals the glory of God. It's called doxazo, a display of his glory. You must be competent. Competent. I always do this. Mike, play something. Play, just play anything on the keyboard. And um, listen.
Hallelujah. Listen. Did you know? Did you know that what you just played is exactly what they are crying for in many churches? And they will find him and not even ask, What is it? Nobody will ask whatever and say, Come, we are willing to pay you. Huh? And you are there paying, playing the things with your fingers and say, Lord, this church, I already see my destiny. No matter what you saw in your dream, I guarantee you, if you are not diligent, you won't enter into it. Praise the Lord. You are a doctor. The first person you gave an injection had problem. Second person had problem. Third problem. Before you blame demons, we're going to, there will be deliverance here shortly. But I told you that the biggest problem of Africa is blaming demons. You can't take demons to court. You can't arrest them. We, we like the fact that they are invisible entities. We excuse our failures. Everything demons. You woke up by nine. I know it's a spirit that, that stopped me. Huh? I planned for five. What happened? You are to go for a job interview by nine. By 8.30, you are strolling around carelessly. As if it's your place. As if you are the director. You are, the CEO that will interview you was there by 7. You stroll around. You came late and say, in the name of Jesus, lift up your head. Oh, ye gates. See that? The Bible says, having the readiness to judge all disobedience. When your obedience, when your own part of the equation is complete. Say, I refuse to be average. Say it, I refuse to be average. At least I'm better than him now. You see, that's the demonic attitude that keeps people as failures. They look around and say, eh, thank God, I'm not good, but at least I'm better than this sister. Even you, you know I'm better than you. God wants to lift his body and it does not take too long. But the greatest publicity is to remain in the secret place. Sharpen yourself. Become exceptional. The Bible says, and John remained in the wilderness until his season of appearance. When John appeared with uncanny accuracy, he knew that this was Jesus. He said, behold the lamb. Behold the lamb. He didn't mistake in Jesus for John the beloved. He didn't mistake him because he asked all the questions in the secret place. Gideon defeated the Midianites. He stayed and asked the question and made sure he was ready. Look at David. David looks at Goliath. And while others are chickening out, David comes. He ran to him. That's what competence does. It gives you confidence. When others are running away, you say, where is the challenge? They were going to hang all the magicians in the days of Daniel. The king said, by tomorrow, if you don't tell me my dream and the interpretation, just know you are dead. And Joseph said, um, I mean, Daniel said, allow me. And the Bible says in the night, the secret, then the secret was revealed unto Daniel. And when he got up, he said, oh king, this and that and that. And he was promoted instantly. Listen, brothers and sisters, contend for mastery. Contend for mastery. Those of us who are at work, contend for mastery. Don't be a liability to your place of work and expect promotion. It's not fair. Contend for mastery. And people will look for you. They will beg you. There are people who have paid millions of dollars to speak for one hour. Dr. Miles Munro, one of my greatest mentors, died last year. He wrote about 54 books and about 49 or so of them were bestsellers. It wasn't just because he was anointed. He consulted for government. $10,000 per hour. Even if it's just to look at your face. Competence. Hallelujah. I'm a builder. I'm a builder. You build a house as if the ground is falling. Why should they invite you again? Right? They send you to go and buy something. You buy something substandard. You don't even know what is the real thing. Refuse incompetence. You trust God to take you to the area of worship. Challenge. Is this not the issue of competition? This is the issue of standing out to give God room. So that you will shine like the stars. The Bible says do everything without complaining or arguing. 
so that you will be called blameless and pure children of the most high and you will shine like the stars as you hold forth the word of life be competent be competent no room for laziness say amen so you must gain mastery mastery attracts people across significant spheres of influence once you have mastery in an area it will attract significant people in that area i receive phone calls and text messages and i'm amazed at certain people who call me they do not even know that they are the people that i have desired to see myself and they call me hello sir how are you I said, let me quickly humble myself. Fine, sir. I am so, 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 and so. Wow, it's my pleasure. Please, how can I see you? Whatever it is to take you, we can send a driver to come and pick you. This is urgent. Ah! Status is changing. There's no more decline. I'm on my way to better day. Prophesy to yourself. Status is changing. No more I'm on my way. I'm on my way to better days. Let me tell you something. Success is not what compels attention. Consistent success is what compels attention. Sooner or later, your grace will be needed. The darkness in the world is too much for you to be ignored if you pay your price. Because not everybody is ready to be competent so when you become exceptional forget about the criticism for now with time people will swallow their words and look for you i assure you the same boss that said over my dead body will be alive and will be the one to shake you and say we are partners in progress by the time his company knows dives he will find you for sure is god speaking to anyone here Whatever your hand findeth to do. That's what my Bible says. It said do it with all your might. Give it the best. Give it the best. I refuse mediocrity in my life. I refuse mediocrity. I will sharpen the sword of ministry. I will make sure I am exceptional. To deliver word in season to God's people. The sick will be healed. The body will be guided. Whatever quota I have been anointed. And have been graced. I will do my best. I'll do my best. I'll do my best. I'll do my best for you. I'll do my best. My very best. I'll do my best. So could it be that the reason why God has not announced you, listen, could it be that the reason why God has not announced you is because he does not want you to blow that opportunity. God is saying prepare. Prepare. Everybody say prepare. Say it, prepare. That's the word of the Lord for now. Prepare. Prepare. See the testimony of our brother Aaron. One side he's leaving a job, another job is coming. A federal government job. We're going to talk about the anointing. But brothers and sisters, let us not deceive ourselves. God will judge me if I don't tell you the truth. Are you getting what I'm saying? The anointing is only active when it comes upon a refined gift. When God anoints your grace, when God anoints your ability, you become a sign and a wonder. That takes me to the next thing I'll talk about very briefly. The anointing. You are ready for the anointing among other things when you refine your gifts. When you refine your abilities. When you refine it, then you are ready for the anointing. Sharpen yourself. Sharpen yourself. And then you are ready for the anointing. The fire never fell until there was a sacrifice upon the altar. The fire does not just fall. The anointing falls when you are prepared, when you are ready, then you become relevant. 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 I refuse to be relegated and I refuse you and forbid you from being relegated. Not just because you are a Christian, but because you do not have what to offer.
Hallelujah. My younger brother, very brilliant gentleman. When he graduated, a job was not forthcoming. And I looked at him. I told him, young man, just keep sharpening your ability. You are too gifted to be ignored. It's a matter of time. Praise the Lord. For one year, that guy, very intelligent young man, but he committed his best. He gave his all. He was very, very serious. He was getting a job that they were paying him 5000 I told him, no problem. Stay there. Just be serious. He became exceptional. If he did not come for work, they would know. And all of a sudden, it was like a dream. He was called to become a lecturer in the University of Joss. He's a lecturer right now. No devil stopped it. No devil stopped it. Everybody say competence. When they called him and he spoke to them, they knew this was a bright material. If you are called, if the kings that are to lift you call on you right now, will you enter the palace and go back to the prison? Or will you enter the palace and shut the door of the prison forever? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Oh God, connect me to that person. Connect me to that ministry. Give me an opportunity to preach in that bigger platform. And God is saying, are you prepared? As far as I'm concerned, I'm willing to bless you. But have you done your work? Are you prepared? I vowed a vow in my life. I will never enter the presence of greatness and go back to my old level. If I step into any atmosphere of greatness, I am prepared in season and out of season. Praise the Lord. When your preparation is complete, then you are ready for the anointing. Acts chapter 10 verse 38. The Bible says how God anointed that Jesus Christ after he spent time learning the, the, the Pentateuch and prepared himself, getting an exact blueprint of his assignment. The Bible says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. And then together, his diligence and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says he went about doing good, became invincible, and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. He said, I have found David my servant, Psalm 89 verse 20, downwards. And with my holy oil have I anointed him. I had to find him. I found David since. But he had not done his work. Now I have found my servant. And with my holy oil I have anointed him. Hallelujah. A man in the construction of the tabernacle, the architect of that construction, he was called Bezalel. The Bible says he was a man who was gifted in craftsmanship. And the anointing of the spirit came. Look, let me tell you, when God anoints your grace, he will command men to hear you. And no, even if you are living in a cave, you become a city that is set on a hill that cannot, cannot. You spend your time praying and studying the word and opening up yourself and making yourself available. Then that unction will come upon you. It comes in a heavy way that nobody will deny the hand of God upon your life. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's a powerful thing to see someone who has done his assignment and is carrying the unction of the spirit. He becomes undeniable invincible no matter what you say about that person the world is too dark for the, that grace to be ignored I show you a key God wants you great God wants you blessed for many of us in this miracle service this is the key to the next dimension I don't just want us to say it is it's raining, raining, let it rain and so on and so forth, no hallelujah grace and I salute so many people who left various places to come tonight because it is part of your, to play your own part. And tonight, grace will come upon you and it will distinguish you. Like Saul, you will go back and they will say, ah, is Saul also one of the prophets? When did you enter this dimension? Favor is when preparation meets opportunity. It's not magical. It's a formula. And God is calling us wipe the tears of your family 
Forget about the challenges of now. That's why we are here. To address it. But above and beyond that, you must make up your mind, brothers and sisters, that something must be different about my life. Make up your mind that by next month's miracle service, I'm coming a new person. I'm coming a better person. Your phone that used to be on silent, by March, calls are coming every day. You wake up with calls and text messages. Men are, are placing demands on the grace, willing to pay any amount, job or no job. There are people who are not working, but they are getting the salary of CEOs because people will pay for your gift. Let me tell you, it says buy the truth. God put a price tag on the truth. And if you have the truth, men will buy the truth. They will pay you. And they will call it a privilege. Is God speaking to someone here? And don't say, I didn't go to school. Or I didn't have the opportunity. I cannot speak English. No, no, no. None of those things. Master whatever God has given you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? master whatever he has given you and tonight an anointing comes on it and i send you like the foxes of samson and you will step in and begin to do wonders the pride of every true leader is not that he becomes a superstar i've said it again and again that true leadership the hallmark of leadership is that you are able to influence followers to also become leaders not maintain followers Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Shortly before we rise, I want you to pray as you are seated. You know the area in your life God has been wanting to bless you. But the truth is your incompetence has limited him. Inside and outside, no matter how far, lift your voice and talk to your maker. And say, Lord, I'm sorry. This music ministry... Hallelujah. Go ahead and pray. Competence. Exceptional competence. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, I'm tired of being a mediocre. I'm tired of my life looking as if you are not mighty. I'm tired of joining the crowd in mediocrity. In this season of the rain, I'm challenging myself. Come on, pray, young and old. It's time for a new season. I arise and I shine for my light is come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon me. Gentiles come to my light and their kings to the brightness of my rising. Never will I be termed forgotten. But I will be called Pula. Pula. The land of delight. I reject mediocrity in business. Mediocrity in ministry. As a student, I reject mediocrity. I challenge laziness. Pray. As a worker, I am the best staff. I am an envoy. Pray. I break ordinary standards. I refuse mediocrity. Pray. As a minister of the gospel, I contend for grace. I stop joining the crowd in mediocrity. Go ahead and pray. As a businessman, I become exceptional. 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 I'm an ambassador. I represent the parliament of heaven. And I represent God at the highest level of excellence. Pray, Koinonia. As you cry upon him, he grants you grace. Lord, you want to change our stories in this season. We make room. We make room. We make room. We make room. We, make room. we reject the spirit of laziness. Time and chance happened to them all. Opportunity and seasons come to them all. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Rise up on your feet. Let's pray this prayer point. You're going to ask God for grace. Mention the areas where you need God to grant you grace to be competent. There are books you will need to buy. There are seminars you will need to attend. There are mentors you will need to find. Whatever it will take to be like an axe that has been sharpened. Go ahead and pray. I receive that grace. Grace for competence. Exceptional competence. Don't let any man preach you against competence. Incompetence will make you poor. Incompetence will make you angry. Incompetence will make you a failure. Incompetence will make you average. I must stand out. I must stand out in my generation. I must stand out because thou hast loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Listen, I like you to pray. Pray for grace to be outstanding. Lift your voice. Grace to be outstanding. Forget about the pain of today. The Bible says, For our light afflictions, which is what for a moment walketh in us a far more exceeding weight of glory. Pray. Why we look not at the things that are seen, but the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are temporal, subject to change. The closed door is subject to change. When you are competent, nations will celebrate you. Without bias, they will celebrate you. They will demand your grace. They will pay for it. the Lord. So I want you to have this at the back of your mind today. Go back and buy the books you need to buy. Go and sell those shoes and buy books. Are you getting it? He said, I, Daniel, understood by books. Stop living a fake life. Go and pack those materials. Sell them and buy what will give you relevance. The Bible speaks about the prophet Samuel. He said the word of the Lord did not fall in his mouth. Be exceptional. Be exceptional. Be exceptional. Don't applaud yourself when you don't have to. Be competent and the world will applaud you. And you will not be ashamed of it. You will not be ashamed to stand before the platforms he gives you. Because you know that you have, you have done your assignment. You will always be ashamed. You will always envy successful people. You will always hate them when you remain a mediocre. But when you rise, you become colleagues in progress. You become partners in progress. You celebrate them because you have become colleagues. Hallelujah. Now to the business of the night. I want us to pray. The Lord is going to do a quick walk in this place. There are mighty healings and deliverances. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Lift your voice and pray and say, Lord, my time for a visitation has come. Pray from the depth of your heart, inside and outside. No matter how far you are, pray. that you must be touched this night 
insist that something must change it doesn't take time it just takes one encounter you came with a lot of challenges don't sit down and waste your time make sure you cry unto god tell the lord exactly what you want tonight go ahead please speak to the lord especially for those standing outside make sure you talk to him I feel the wind of your spirit Now the heartbeat of heaven Let us hear We see the rain of your love We feel the wind of your spirit Now the heartbeat of heaven Let us hear So let it rain open the floodgates of heaven let it rain let it rain open the floodgates of heaven let it rain let it hallelujah hallelujah listen i don't care what the issue is let your faith rise right now are you hearing what i'm saying i see sick people all around inside and outside and i see all kinds of people but i want you to know tonight that the god of wonders is still in this place so let hope rise Darkness trembles in your holy light. Your hands, everyone. Hallelujah. Listen. Tonight there is an unusual anointing upon me. I began to sense this right from home. There will be massive deliverance right now. Massive deliverance. There are people who have come. There are families that have come from far and near. Hallelujah. And every challenge, every power of darkness. My Bible says every tree that has not been planted by my father. Please lift your hands inside and outside. Participate. Listen. We are going to shout that name. Please don't you think it's just a chorus or it's a formula. There is an anointing with it. Because it's a name that is above every other name. Hallelujah. You are going to shout that name. At the count of three. As you shout that name. There will be all kinds of deliverances. Many of you, you are standing in not just for yourself. But for your family members, all kinds of spirits and spells attempting to bring back what Jesus died for. In the name of Jesus, I speak to the realm of the spirit and I declare in the mighty name of Jesus that every foul devil, every covenant, every spell at the count of three, let the fire of God separate those people right now. One, two, three. Shake those devils. 
I command those forces in the name of Jesus. I cast out those devils. Bring them out. The fire is falling on witchcraft outside. The fire is falling. Every power that is not of God, I send the rod of judgment. Every power that is not of God, everyone standing upon this ground, I come with an apostolic anointing in the name of Jesus. Satan, let God's people go. There's no hiding place for the power of God is everywhere. There is no hiding place, not for witchcraft. There is no hiding place. I command judgment. Let the angels of the living God move across this congregation and break chains. Hallelujah. I see a lot of chains. Lift your hands again. I see chains. So many chains. Break. Chains. Chains break. Listen, some of you, this chains has lasted for years and decades. I don't care how long it has been. As you shout that name again, I see many people outside. You will know the chain has broken. That embargo over your family. You will know it when it happens. Because I hear sounds of chains at the count of three. Shout that name again with all your might. And I command that as they shout, may those chains break. One, two, three. Chains of stagnation. Chains. Chains. From every chain, I break three chains of sickness, chains of poverty, chains of stagnation. I break free. I listen. Listen. I guarantee you, not one person standing on this ground will go back with the chains holding you. I'm speaking to the powers. They know the voice of God. This is the season of the rain. This is the season of the rain. And in the name of Jesus. Now over families. Any family. Under the sound of my voice. You have suffered mysteriously. I come in the name of the Lord whose I am. And I command. Judgment upon the powers of darkness. Judgment upon the powers of darkness. Right families. Shake it, take 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 it, take
Hallelujah. For this purpose was the Son of God made manifest that he may destroy, put to an end, annihilate. It says, Son of man, what seest thou? Zechariah 1 18. It says, Four horns. These are the horns that have lifted up themselves against Judah, against Israel, and against Jerusalem. So that no man will lift up his head. He said, but I have sent four carpenters. And they will terrorize those horns. We have come tonight to terrorize the power of darkness. They must let you go. After nine plagues, Pharaoh refused to let them go. He said, yet will I send one more plague upon Pharaoh and Egypt. And after that, he will let you go. Jesus paid the price in full, completely. There is no reason why the devil should tie you down. When he was on the cross, he said it is finished. And we are here to enforce that which, that fatigue. In the name of Jesus, for those in front here, they represent families. I don't care what kinds of spirits or entities. At the count of three, you will let God's people go. And release their families no matter how long the blood of Jesus annihilates the legal hold you have I don't care what covenant you have in the name of Jesus therefore I speak to every foul spirit that at the count of three you let them go never to return right now in the name of Jesus one two three go 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 out you go out you go out you go never to return out you go by the ministry of the blood by the ministry of the blood I cause you by the ministry of the blood release the families release their finances release their destinies go now go now I compel you by the blood of Jesus of captivity hallelujah I declare every family under bondage free I don't care how long the doors have been closed we open it now you will begin to experience unlimited breakthroughs. Yeah. Hallelujah. Who is Stephanie? Stephanie. I hear a name Stephanie. You are wearing a like orange veil. Do we have somebody like that? Is it an orange veil or something? Stephanie. Yeah. Bring that woman. That lady or that woman, whoever. Just let them win. Okay, young lady. This is the spirit of death. Bring her. Lay hands on her stomach. I curse that spirit. Every spirit of infirmity. Out! Now! Leave her alone. She will rise up completely healed. Stephanie. Stephanie. I see here the name. Hallelujah. I'm seeing a family in a vision. We have to hurry up. We really want to finish first. So I'm seeing a family. There is a family that came here. I'm seeing four people. Like is it four children? Or something? A family. Do we have someone like that? Please, if, if it's yours... If it's your case or it looks like your own, just signify and let us know. If there is none, we can move forward. Because this is what the Lord is showing me. I'm seeing a family. It's like four children. They are here. They came here. Shut up. 
Is it you? You are the one. Where are the people? Where are your children? Come. Why are you sitting back? Come. Do you know that there is a call of God upon the family? Not just your mother, but upon the family. And it's a prophetic call. It's a prophetic call. Right? It's not only your mother. I, didn't, I'm, I'm, I don't know you people. But the hand of God is going to come upon you. It's a mighty anointing of the spirit. It will come upon you. Are you part of the family? Huh? You are related. You are what? You are on your own. Okay, please, until I call you, but come, come and stand since you have come. For the Lord is going to bring restoration. This is the first thing that will happen. Mark it. Restoration. Number two. What do you do? the Lord is going to lift you why am I seeing a ring in your hand I'm not seeing a physical ring but it's in the spirit I'm seeing a ring your wedding bells are ringing are you married huh this is what I'm we don't feel embarrassed we're a family marriage is not a bad thing Abi mommy is it a bad thing it's not a bad thing because there is nobody and you are wondering, this is what you are thinking in your heart. Where is the person? Listen. He said, we see the fire. We see the fire. We see the wood. Where is the lamb? And he said, Jehovah Jireh. The same word that comes. Listen. Listen, my dear. You don't know me. I'm not a herbalist. Are you getting my point? When the Lord brings a word, he will make it happen. My brother. This year you will hold finances that will make you afraid. Come, what do you do? What does what what do you do? Huh? That's not it at all. This, this one is just for generosity, just to prepare you. God is going to open a strange opportunity for you. Do you believe what I'm saying? It's a strange opportunity. If you people have ever doubted whether the hand of God is upon your mother, I'm telling you, she's not fake. I'm saying it now because they have been talking about this woman she sees and people have been saying she's fake I'm saying if this woman is fake she will not enter this place I guarantee you except I'm not a man of God please she's not fake what she needs is is the, an, an accurate alignment through the word of God so that her prophetic vistas will be sharpened she has a lot of prophetic insight but the word level is very low. So there is dwindling. That stability in the spirit is not there. That's all. This mama is not fake. Because I'm seeing her walking in a prophetic and a healing anointing. Very powerfully. Come, madam, come. Let's pray to the king. You have taken all the glory. You have taken. Hold hands, both of you. I show you a mystery. Madila katabarata. Jembra mato zata li kaparando skolapaya. Mambro no supaya. One will chase a thousand. But two will chase ten thousand. Confirm your word right now, oh God, as I speak. There is a transference of graces. Right now happening between both of you. It's a drinking together. It's a happy anointing. That is coming because you will also step into a strong evangelical and prophetic anointing. Drink of that wine right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Don't be afraid to help her. You won't be with her forever. But the Lord is going to lift you in due season. And you will begin to see in a strange way. May the Lord bless you. May he anoint you. In the name of Jesus Christ. I break the embargo of darkness over the family. Come. You are a great lady, but the devil wants to oppress your life. Hold my hands. Just hold my hands. Mm, for he is here. 
Light shines in the darkness. You must release her. Let her go now. I'm seeing an old woman's face. But in the name of Jesus, I declare, you step into strange dimensions of grace. I command deliverance to you right now. In the name of Jesus. God bless you. It's all right. I bless this family. The Lord changes your story. You will return with dramatic testimonies. In Jesus' name. Newi. I'm hearing a name of a place. There is, there is. Newi. I know it's an evil place, right? There is, there is, a, there is somebody. I think a lady or a guy or somebody from that place. Newi. Who is that? Please, if it's your case, whether you are outside, just make your way so that you don't waste our time. Please, there are so many other people. Come, mama. She's your mother. What's wrong with her? Is this working? Please help us. She's having a problem with her legs. She's having problem with her legs. knee problems. Her legs. Oh. Her legs. Her Arthritis. No. You don't know. Yes. You I love God. Sleep. Very well. Very well. Yeah? Very well. Well enough to marry a man of God? Yes. Because that's your husband. He's a man of God. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know how, madam. <laughs> See mommy laughing. <laughs> mommy, come. What is wrong with her leg, please? Let's, let's not... Well, it has been disturbing her for some time now. How long? Up to two years now. I feel a swoon in my waist by my left leg, fish ground. I used to feel serious pain. Don't, don't, don't cry, it's okay. Mama, look at me. You came here because you believe in Jesus. Yes. Look at me, just look at me. Say, Jesus. Jesus. Thank you for healing. Thank you for healing. I receive healing. I receive healing. Pain. Pain. Go. Go now. Now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Mama, you believe Jesus. I believe Jesus. Run up here. Come. Just come. Forget about the legs. Come. Go ahead. Do what you couldn't do. Look. Lord. Praise the Lord. I came to this program today. I'm no more feeling the pain. I even I went Check. to hospital today. My come on, give it. To break every chain, break every chain. Let's go. Come. Where are you from? Cross River. Huh? Cross River. You are serious about your love for God, right? Because you are going to marry a man of God. Yes, I am. You, are, you know it now. Yes. What I'm saying, you have known it. I'm just confirming to you. Thank you, Jesus. Is it a lie? They just say I'm lying. Thank you, Jesus. Ladies know a lot of things. They just hide it. I'm not endorsing your dream and your vision. No, I don't know what you saw. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Not only that, truly, truly, the grace and the spirit upon your mother is upon you because your mother is a good woman. Mama, tell me one thing you want God to do in your family. I want my children to serve God. I want all of them to serve God. Father, stretch your hands towards this family, everybody. What a request. Not for money. Many of you will ask for money. I will give me money sharp, sharp. In the name of Jesus, you are the son. Where are the rest? You are the only one. Just two of you. My children are 11 in number. 11? Yes. And I have since graduated. I thank God for what God has been doing in my life. I thank God. Praise the Lord. Stretch your hands and pray for this family. 11 children. In the name of Jesus Christ, they will serve the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, they will serve the Lord. I bless this family. Let doors of prosperity be open. Let doors of advancement be open. In the name of Jesus. God bless you. Celebrate Jesus for Mama's miracle. Rejoice with them and you will have your own testimony. Hallelujah. Who brought this person? 
help us now. Where are the people? Huh? I'm the one. It's okay, Mama. Relax. What is the situation? What is it? He can't walk. Yes, he problem. What happened to him? It's okay. okay. What happened to him? Look at me. How are you? Can you talk? Yeah, let me talk. What happened to you? Uh, I fell sick last year October when they took me to the hospital. So we went for so many examinations. And they say it's cancer. And when they refer me to Shika here. They said you have cancer. Yes. Sir. So right now you have cancer. Yes, sir. So they've left you to die. Yes, sir. Cut off of your legs. Yes, sir. I cannot even walk, sir. You can eh? I can't walk, sir. Since when? Since when did he stop walking? Last month. You believe that the power of God is going to set you free? Yes, sir. My brother, look at me. Jesus is able to heal you. You believe that? You have taken all the praise. You have taken all the glory. You have taken all the praise. There is a spirit. I curse that spirit right now. I curse that spirit. Right now, you feel fire going through your body. I curse that spirit upon these legs. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I release the power of God. I command that spirit. Leave him right now. Move your legs. Start moving your legs. Try to move it. In the name of Jesus Christ. Are you feeling the legs? Do you feel the legs? Now I release strength to these legs. Right now. I release strength to these legs. In the name of Jesus I release strength to these legs right now. Exercise the legs and let him start moving it. Go ahead. The cry in your family comes to an end by the power of the Holy Spirit. The Lord visits you and brings to an end. He brings to an end in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Please call this mama, this madam. Come, he will answer you. Come. Massage his leg. I will tell you when to pick him up. He's visiting you in a strange way. Bringing breakthroughs to you. Refining the fire. And causing the hand of wickedness over your family. That embargo is lifted over your family. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Come, ma. Don't worry. God is touching everybody. Just connect to what he's doing. Mommy, look at me. Please don't cry. Look at me. Just look at me. I want you to know that the captivity in your family has come to an end. I know you are crying. Don't worry about it. Believe me. Look at me. Where is your husband? He's not here. No, come. Is that all there is to the story? When I left house, he never come back from work. I need to pray because your marriage is shaking. You need the grace of God. Father, in the name of Jesus, Mama, don't cry. God is bringing you restoration. That's what I hear in my spirit. And I command and I prophesy restoration in the name of Jesus Christ. I cause that force of darkness right now in the name of Jesus Christ I'm looking at an angel walking through this room this is what I'm looking at an angel the Lord wants me to talk to somebody that person will come under the power of God right now when that happens please let me have that person you have taken all the voices you have taken all lamentations. You have taken all the praise. You have made let me yours. Please bring out.
I give you, I give you, I give you the highest praise. A fire that ignites you and sets you free. I command in the name of Jesus that influence of darkness leaves you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now please, all those who came here specifically for healing miracles, find your way to the front right now. Worship team, give us a powerful session of worship as we pray. Please, don't make it rowdy, inside and outside. Aside from the, the family that I minister to, if you came with a sick person, please come and line up here quickly. Let's save time. Expect the power of God to touch you. Please. You see what the Lord is doing. And all of us who are standing, if there is a loved one or somebody you know, as you are standing, connect to them. Please, don't lose connection with this service. Some of you can take steps of faith. God is already touching people. Don't lose connection. No matter how many we are here to minister to you. It will be a quick walk. Pastor Jackson, it's going to be a very quick walk because of time. There are still some other things God wants to do. Especially the prophetic aspect of this meeting. There is a guy outside. The power of God is going to hit him in a mighty way. God is bringing restoration in his life. A gentleman, it will be like a tornado. It will be a mighty encounter. Now listen, all of you standing, I want you to know that Jesus heals. The price for your complete healing has been paid. I know that there are HIV people standing here. There are people with all kinds of medical reports. I guarantee you, the price has been paid. And so as we pray, everyone I'd like you to connect because some of you shortly you will be receiving strong impartations of the healing anointing. So you must focus. Don't be distracted. Don't be distracted. Hallelujah. Elijah said, if you can see me, don't, don't be distracted, please. Hallelujah. Please pass your request. Ushers, let's hurry up, please. Get them to the aisle. Just pass it to the last person. The last person by the side, please. Help the ushers inside and outside. It's not a ritual. There is a strange mystery of answered prayers in this place. Please. Begin to pray in tongues as you do that, please. Everywhere. Begin to pray in tongues. All those connecting with us online, it's time for them to connect now so that we can... Hallelujah. We're not trying to build doctrines out of. No, no. I'm, I'm one person that fights tradition, especially where the Spirit of God is not there. But this was an instruction God gave according to what Hezekiah did. Hezekiah carried the threat letter and brought it to the altar and laid it there before God. Hallelujah. Please, very quickly, inside and outside. If others sent it to you by text and you've not copied it out, just you can just keep it and connect by faith. Unto you that answers prayer shall all flesh come. Lord Jesus, we come before you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. These are the requests of your people. The Bible says, be anxious for nothing but in everything. It says, with prayer and supplication, prayer and supplication with thanksgiving make your request known unto God make it known don't hide it make it known begin to talk to the Lord about what is on the altar here right now please pray hearing is our father glorified when you bear much fruit some of you the request you wrote here only God can grant it that's why we don't read it we just pray. 
Because probably if some of us see what you've written here, our faith level may not be able to take it. Please make sure everybody's request gets here. No matter how long, let's do it very quickly. I have seen God do strange things. Strange things in the lives of people. We have seen all kinds of dramatic miracles. Please, I want you to know the person you are praying to. I want you to know that it's not to Joshua Selman. It's not to an idol. You are not praying to the president of this nation. The king of kings. Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. Yeah. Is there anything too hard for me to do? Myself and Pastor Jakes will be praying passionately on this request. I want you to believe that as we make contact with your request, I tell you the angels, there are some of you as we are praying on it instantly, you will begin to get answers. In one minute, everybody begin to blast in tongues as we pray. Father, hear the prayers of your people in the name of the Lord Jesus. Let there be all kinds, all kinds of miracles. I agree with my brother, all kinds of miracles. Supernatural jobs, supernatural liftings. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Unto you that answer prayer will all flesh Blessed Lord, that every cry, every need, Lord, every pain, Lord, let things that look impossible by men, we pray for a change in the name of Jesus. We ask for the hand of God to come mighty, Lord, upon families. Let there be testimonies, Lord, unfolding testimonies. We pray for the hand of God, Lord, to open doors that have been closed. Hear that, though. We ask for your mighty miracles, breakthroughs, Lord. The blessings of God that make it rich and added no sorrow. Father, we pray for jobs, amazing, blessed jobs, Lord. Miracles, miracles, Lord. Healings of families, Lord. We pray that, Lord, contracts that have been overdue, Lord, we pray for sudden calls. Calls, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray, Lord, the tears of your people, Lord, the needs of your people. In the name of Jesus, we command that angels responsible for bringing answers to these prayers be released right now in the name of Jesus. Let the heavens be open over your people in the blessed name of Jesus, my Father. As we lay these prayer points before you, Lord, we ask in the name of Jesus. We ask that doors be opened. Let greatness arise in your people in the blessed name of Jesus. Thank you because, God, as we ask in the name of Jesus, we know you answer in the blessed name of Jesus. We pray. Thank you, Jesus. 
Hallelujah. Please rise up everybody. There is a heavy anointing in this place. Just a few minutes and we'll be done. Hallelujah. I believe in the power of prophecy. I may not be able to call everybody one by one, but the word of God, Kabbalah Taya, he said is the discerner of the thoughts and the intent. No matter where you are, one word of prophecy can tear open whatever limitation. Please, I want you to believe. Everything you see us do in this miracle service is as instructed. There is no room for entertainment. We fear God and will not gather you to waste your time. Hallelujah. The Bible says, believe in the Lord and you shall be established. He said, believe in his prophets and you shall prosper. Lift your hands. As your level changes, lift your hands. Something will happen to you. Please, I want you to receive as I pray. Shout amen from the depth of your heart. Amen means let it be so. It's an act of faith. Hallelujah. I bring to an end the era of mourning in your life and your family. I say it again. The era of mourning by prophecy. Let mourning end in your life and in your family. Hallelujah. Hear me. Every embargo that has stood on the way to your next level. By the weapon of the prophetic. In the name of the Lord Jesus. I command those limitations broken. Human limitations. Demonic limitations. I command them broken now. I command them broken now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I declare every dimension you should have entered by now that you have not entered by the mystery of restoration. In the name of Jesus, between now and the next miracle service, step into those dimensions. I prophesy to you, step into those dimensions. I prophesy to you, step into those dimensions. Step into those dimensions. Step into those dimensions. Hallelujah. I pray for every student here. Mam bro, do sekete balakata. Listen. This proverb will no longer be used in your life. Listen. That proverb that makes God look as if he's not alive in your academics. In the name that is above all names. We send angels to every department. Of every campus represented here. We send angels to every faculty. May they tear down. May they uproot every trace of wickedness. May they tear down. May they uproot in the name of Jesus. Let missing scripts be found. Let students that have been victimized be restored in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. For God has not given us the spirit of fear. There are many people you want to take steps but fear is keeping you down in the name of jesus the bible says and to deliver them who through the fear of death have all their lifetime be subject to bondage i cause fear from your life now i cause fear from your life now i cause fear i cause fear in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I pray for you. There are many who have been praying. Lord reveal to me the purpose of my existence. There are people who have been crying. I don't want to waste my time in destiny. I pray for you. That through a night vision. 
mysterious prophetic encounters may your exact assignment be revealed in the name of Jesus Christ there are people praying right now all you, are, you have come here for is the direction for the next level you just came to get direction I prophesy to you the Bible says and ye shall hear a voice from behind saying this is the way I command between now and next week let there be accurate direction accurate direction in the name of Jesus I pray for you there are people here whenever they want to favor you people change their minds for reasons you do not understand I pray in the name of Jesus that every planting that is not of God that is making your helpers reject you in the name of the Lord Jesus I command them broken now I command them broken now hallelujah by the power of prophecy I connect you to the men that need to help you and lift you to your next dimension please take seriously what I'm saying in the name of Jesus I connect you I connect you business helpers ministry helpers academic helpers marital helpers receive the ministry in the name of Jesus prophecy is like rain your job is to receive it once you receive it it starts acting immediately in your life hallelujah I pray in the name of Jesus Christ over your health that spirit that keeps bringing recurrent health conditions the price has been paid and therefore by the blood I break you free from any covenant of infirmity I break you free from I command everyone under any spirit of infirmity that is recurrent may you be free once and forever hallelujah I challenge embargo of hardship over people and families there are families that love god but it's like hardship will never leave them in the name of jesus we stand tonight in this place and we challenge the root of hardship by next miracle service return with breakthrough testimonies return with breakthrough testimonies you may not know how it will happen but may my God go before you and shock you. Hallelujah. I pray for your finances. In the name of Jesus. There are many who are giving. You are tithing. You are faithful. But it just looks like when things are about to happen, there are limitations. In the name of the Lord Jesus. I declare that beginning from next month, I invoke the mystery of divine supply the same way hear me the same way a raven the Bible does not tell us where it came from but it brought bread for the prophet I command mysteriously may your gates be open now to receive the forces of the Gentiles I pray for everyone called dull in this place you understand but something happens to your mind that 10 times better anointing that distinguishes people receive it in the name of Jesus I sense an anointing one more time I pray that prayer whatever stops you from understanding the bible says and he opened their understanding 
that they might understand the scriptures i pray for you may understanding be granted unto you hallelujah favor magabadadala the one factor that separates men that favor in a heavy dimension may it mantle you from now may favor mantle you from now in the name of jesus financial favor marital favor academic favor favor in your job favor in ministry hallelujah everyone who is confused about life any aspect of life i bring that confusion to an end now i pray for all those who came here specifically trusting god for the fruit of the womb in fact i pray for you listen not just physical barrenness any area of your life this is the year of the rain and when rain falls, barrenness stops. Therefore, I command, be fruitful in the name of Jesus. Fruitful, multiply, replenish, subdue, and have dominion in the name of Jesus. I command everything called dead in your life and your family. I don't care for how long it has died. Your health, your business, your life. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I command resurrection right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for you. There are people who desire God. You desire an encounter. That's what you need. You desire an encounter. I pray for you. May the angel of the Lord's presence visit you. You may not understand what I'm saying. May the angel of the Lord's presence visit you. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for your gift. Your ability. Your skill. Whatever you are using that brings bread. Help her please. I pray for you. The works of your hands because you are determined to be diligent you will see the testimonies that will come from this prayer i put an anointing on your skill i put an anointing i put an anointing on your ability i put an anointing on your gift on your work on your skill may it begin to produce in a supernatural dimension hallelujah now lift your hands i just want to do an impartation there are people who have come from different places please be sensitive we are out of time we will soon round up but it's time to receive something listen listen i told you there will be many impartations hear me the anointing does not make the difference the anointing is the difference are you hearing what i'm saying no matter what you are doing when the grace is not there you will struggle forever please hear me especially in ministry if you are a minister of the gospel in this place help her please it's time for you to catch this thing for real it's yours for the taking listen i want to pray as i stretch my hands and pray inside and outside wherever you are you must not be in ministry like fivefold whatever area many of you will begin to have dreams encounters listen many of you will step into healing graces there's no time to move one by one but i'm going it's one of the major assignment god gave me tonight please believe it you will argue it at your own detriment there is a cheap route the help of god is here to lift you the help of god is here to take you lift your hands everybody father i pray that in the next two minutes let there be 
from the front to the back outside let there be strange impartations at the count of three one two three let the wind blow right now receive it prophetic graces apostolic graces shake it take it a protosia dreams visions encounters dreams visions encounters the word of knowledge gifts of the spirit let there be distributions right now right now right now the gift of wisdom the word of knowledge the working of miracles the gift of tongues and interpretation of tongues the gift of prophecy gifts of healing healing mantles receive it receive it leadership anointings leadership anointings leadership anointings i impart it leadership anointings utterance 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 i release it to you utterance in the name of jesus to communicate the things of the spirit utterance receive it utterance i i release upon you insight into scriptures insight into the mysteries of the kingdom i grant you access by grace to the mysteries of the spirit the mysteries of dominion the mysteries of prosperity the mysteries of impact hallelujah the final prayer i want to pray for you is honor many of you don't know what honor is honor is not the same thing as blessings you can be blessed but not honorable it says and Jabez was more honorable honor that fragrance that compels loyalty that fragrance zamatic alive lord everyone under the sound of my voice inside and outside may this grace that that will bring honor to a man beyond your age beyond your level receive it now in the name of jesus i release it from the depths of my heart receive it in the name of jesus from today everywhere you go may honor follow you and i declare these hands that are lifted like aaron like joshua lifted up the hands of his servant moses i command may those hands never go down may the lord cut off from your life everything that will bring your hands down and i pray for marriages supernaturally may god connect people supernaturally in the name of jesus christ hallelujah as it is happening to you let it happen to every one of your family members no matter where they are i prophesy as it is happening to you let it happen to every one of your family members hallelujah now very quickly you are here you've never given your heart to the lord please hear me please keep standing everybody no moving around let's honor them just in one minute you're here inside and outside you have never made a decision for jesus christ or at one time you have made a decision for jesus but you found yourself dwindling you have seen the hand of god and jesus is calling you back home there's nothing to be ashamed of don't let any man cajole you win the war in your heart today for the sake of your destiny wherever you are please start running from your seat inside and outside and come out here i want to lead you personally to christ and pray for you go ahead are there people like that go ahead don't look at any neighbor don't look at anyone wherever you are inside or outside don't pretend it jesus is calling you very quickly very quickly where are those who are giving their lives to jesus 
inside or outside make your way to the front don't be ashamed please appreciate them coin on you as they come god bless you keep coming god bless you keep coming no matter how far rush and make your way young and old god bless you keep coming it's time to make it right don't play games with destiny jesus is calling you come and surrender everything totally and consciously totally and consciously please make way for them don't stop them make way for them come to jesus hallelujah i salute and congratulate every one of you for coming out hallelujah the prayer you are praying is not reciting a poem i want you to pray from the depths of your heart lift your right hand and say after me passionately and truly say lord jesus i love you and i believe in you i believe you died for me you rose again for me i surrender completely to you take charge of my life from today and forever i denounce sin i denounce satan and i receive eternal life into my spirit keep your hands lifted father receive these ones change them transform their lives radically i cause the power of sin from your life and i release grace upon you to experience that which christ has done for you in the name of the lord jesus everything that keeps drawing you to sin i curse it right now in the name of jesus god bless you thank you for this great decision please follow the ushers the gentlemen with the jerseys they will have your details and you'll be back to your seat god bless you. dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it see you on our next video bye pray 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 for your destiny the phase of development Lord, grant me the discipline.